PNC Park. The Bucks hoping to break out the brooms against the Brewers. Big crowd coming over the Clemente Bridge into the ballpark to see game three between the Brewers and the Pirates. Youth Baseball and Softball Day presented by your Western Pennsylvania Chevy dealers. Hi, everybody. Along with Bob Walk, I'm Tim Never. Dan Potash will join us shortly. The Pirates have won eight straight. They are now the first major league team to get to 50 wins. Pirates doing it for the first time since 1960. Bob, they have been very, very good during this streak. Now, a lot of things uh, happening around here that haven't happened either ever or in a long, long time. And it's, you know, that 60 season, we remember how that ended. Uh, a local guy playing second base uh, hit a home run to end the World Series. Uh, could that happen again this year? Hmm, we have a local guy at second base. Well, as of today, we're halfway through the season, just half more to go. The pitchers have been getting it done for the Pirates. They've been a large reason for the Bucks' success, and here's how they'll line up for the next five games. Charlie Morton going today. He's opposing Kyle Lois, but then Jeff Locke on Tuesday against the Phillies, Jenmar Gomez, Garrett Cole, and then Francisco Liriano. After that, he gave him a good start last night. What a collection of ERAs uh, sitting there. Five guys that are in the rotation right now. You don't see ERAs like that in a, in a group. Uh, that's another one of the rarities that's going on with this club. Pitching, just incredible. These guys have been pitching like major leaguers, but they were youth baseball players at one point in time. Today is youth baseball and softball day. We'll see some of the photos and hear from some of the players about their youth baseball days throughout the course of the telecast. Bucks and Brewers coming up from PNC Park. And on fields like this, games are played. Strikes are thrown. Balls are hit. And smiles are everywhere. I love to hit. I love to pitch. I love to catch. I love to fly around the bases. I can make plays. The game of baseball is often the first sport that kids play and a lucky few have turned that game into a profession. 
Even in the major leagues, baseball is still a kid's game. But regardless of where they're from or what age they might be, they all have one thing in common. I love baseball. I love baseball. I love baseball. We love baseball! And we love it too. Youth Baseball and Softball Day presented by your Western PA Chevy dealers. Here at PNC Park, Clint Hurdle racing a youngster on a Kids Day Sunday. And this is a, a common sight on a Sunday to see the manager doing that. And of course, Andrew McCutcheon signing autographs for one of the lucky kids who got to go out on the field and get an autograph from him. Well, the Brewers today will send this lineup out there. And each guy, Oki, will lead off. Gene Segura batting in the two spot. He has a 12 game hitting streak. He's been one of the hottest performers in the National League, hitting 347. Carlos Gomez bats third, then Francisco in the cleanup spot. Weeks, Betancourt, and Maldonado. Logan Schaefer bats eighth, and the pitcher, Kyle Loesch, bats ninth, facing ground chuck, Charlie Morton. Take a look at uh, Charlie's numbers brought to you by Chevrolet. Three starts, pretty good. The ERA at 281, excellent. And uh, one thing that we have really noticed, and it's reflected by the strikeout numbers 12 and 16 innings, is that curveball he's got going. Been very effective. So Martin will face Aoki. And the ball game's underway with strike one call. Aoki hitting 290. And it takes inside. One ball and one strike. Aoki, a guy who can do a lot of different things with the bat. Likes to use all parts of the field. He can slow it down. He can slap hit. He also has occasional pop. Lifts this one in the air to short left center field. Here comes McCutcheon. One out. McCutcheon got a nice break on that. Got in there so quick he had time to shut it down and uh, wait for the ball. Defensively behind Morton this afternoon. Marte McCutcheon and Garrett Jones in the outfield. Field has Alvarez and Barmas on the left side, Walker and Sanchez on the right, Michael McHenry the fort doing the catching, completing the battery with Charlie Morton. The Pirates wearing their early 1970s alternate uniforms. These are their Sunday home uniforms that they're wearing each and every Sunday. Players seem to like them. Clint Barmas getting a start today. Clint Hurdle knowing that Jordy Mercer has had the bulk of the time lately and to make sure that Barmas was going to get a spot to get in there as well. And a ground ball up the middle. Walker with a backhand play. He got him. Neil Walker has been sensational going to his right with that backhanded play up the middle. And he retires the speedy Gene Segura here. This is the kind of defense you like seeing played on the at all times, but especially when Charlie's on the mound, because there's going to be a lot of ground balls. The uh, the infield has to be at the top of their game, and that was a top-notch play by Walker. Nice uh, play by Gabby too, going way out, grabbing that ball. Two men out for the Brewers in the top of the first inning. Batter is Carlos Gomez, the center fielder. This one's going to get past Barmas and into center field for a base hit. And Gomez has been a new player this year. Certainly in terms of the way that he has hit for average. Batting now better than 317. He's hit for some power too with 12 home runs. And he's learned to run the bases a little bit better. That was one thing that was going against him last year with the Brewers. It's that he made way too many outs on the bases. So Gomez getting a ground ball to sneak through. Charlie Morton's going to throw some pitches that are going to be hit on the ground. But. Some of them are going to get through from time to time. Juan Francisco, the batter. Francisco at first base, the fifth different first baseman the Brewers have used this year. Corey Hart now gone for the year. They were hoping to get him back at some point, but the lost year for Hart. Charlie steps off. Big uh, shift on Francisco. Really got everybody moved around. See the left side of the infield is totally open. You have Pedro playing uh, 
to the right of second base. There goes the runner Gomez McHenry throwing down not in time. And there's nobody at third base Morton getting over there and that's one of the risks that you take. When you have a shift on with a runner at first now the defensive alignment will have to change. With a man at second base. Yeah I'm surprised that Gomez didn't go because it. Uh, I know this had to go through his mind that if I'm safe I'm going to get up and run to third there was nobody there. And the balls rolling off to the side he would have made it but. With two outs. If there was any possibility in his mind that he wasn't going to make it, he did the right thing by just staying in second. Well, you thought the Brewers might try to run some today. The last time McHenry was behind the plate, A.J. Burnett was on the hill and they ran, and A.J.'s got a slow delivery to the plate. But not only does that steal now, it puts a runner in scoring position, but maybe even more importantly, with the sinker baller on the mound, it takes the Pirates out of the shift. You see the uh, Brewers uh, numbers on the steals. Yeah, they stole five against him. When you have a sinker ball around on the mound. You like this to be able to, to concentrate your defenders in the one spot where he's going to hit most of his ground balls. And a little roller. Morton's going to have to field it. And he retires Juan Francisco. A nine pitch inning for Charlie Morton. Half inning of play gone by. Pirates coming to bat when we come back. To the plate for the first time to face Kyle Loesch and the Toyota starting lineup for Pittsburgh. Starling Marte leads off, and then there's Neil Walker when he was uh, Brad Mar Pine Youth Baseball League from the North Hills. A 380 on base percentage when he bats second. That's where he is today. Then McCutcheon and Jones. Alvarez, Sanchez, McHenry, Barma sitting eighth, Charlie Morton ninth. Must have been a lefty starting that day, huh? Yeah, they had a lefty on the hill. <laughs> The numbers on Kyle Loesch. Not bad numbers. He's been a very hot pitcher of light. And it's going to be a uh, a tough one today, you would think. But doesn't seem to make any difference uh, lately. Tough or not, Pirates come away with a win. Starling Marte hopes to get the Bucks off to a good start today. He takes a strike. He has been uh, smoking hot. To Talked about that earlier in the pregame. It uh, just tons of extra base hits, not just singles. Has that slugging percentage uh, climbing the charts up there at 466 now. Not bad for your leadoff hitter. Pretty good. Excellent. One one pitch coming from Loesch. Swing and a miss. It's one and two. That puts him number two on the team behind Alvarez in slugging percentage. Just uh, one point ahead of touch. Those triples will add up when it comes to figuring out the slugging percentage. And Loesch gets them. So Marte strikes out to start the ball game. And 
this will bring up Walker next, but let's look at this pitch first. Breaking ball down and away. Dark Marte to chase. And that's the kind of the continued chink in his armor, especially as a leadoff hitter. Is he, he's got a lot of strikeouts. It's a 70 some now on the season for Marte. Strike one to Walker. You would like that leadoff guy ideally to be you know, more of a contact type hitter. Get that on base percentage up. That's that really is talking about a slugging percentage, but the on base percentage is really the, the big number for the leadoff hitters. You're supposed to be setting the table. Jay Bell. Looks good in that old hat. I think he likes it. He's an old school type guy. He didn't get a chance to wear that hat. He would have fit right in with his style of play, play in that era of baseball. The blast era. Two balls and a strike to Neil Walker. One out, base is empty, and Loesch delivers. Three and one. Numbers for Kyle Loesch 17 starts, 18 total appearances against the Pirates, 9 and 2. Winning percentage 82%. It's the highest against any opponent over the course of his 13 year career. And Neil waited just a second to make sure that was ball four, and the Pirates have a base runner. So the Bucks with a man on. And Loesch will face the number three hitter in the order, Andrew McCutcheon. Here's Andrew, one of his Little League photos. One of my favorite days of the year, Little League Day. That's always fun. It's neat to see the, uh, the big league players. Uh, Back when they were just having a good time, going for ice cream after the game. Used to get distracted in the field because there used to be an ice cream truck that come by our little league field, and you hear the music. You'd be in the field trying to concentrate, you'd hear the music. No, it's gone. Your concentration is completely gone. Everybody looked. Up in the air to right field and down the line, Ioki. Over by the railing, they run out of room. To work on the bases. Uh, Dave Jow's coaching first base again for this ball game, and Rick Sofield coaching over at third base. Nick Labor, the regular third base coach, been a little under the weather. He is doing his work from the dugout the last few days. No balls, two strikes, one out. Walker, the runner at first. Two. Bosch is 34 years old. Originally drafted by the Cubs, but made his big league debut with the Minnesota Twins. Spent a lot of years with the Twins. Before going over to the Reds and with the Cardinals. So he made his stop here now in Milwaukee. Likes the NL Central. He does. Did have a, a brief stint in the East, though, 2007. He split time between Cincinnati and Philadelphia. McCutcheon hits it high in the air to left center field. Center fielder Gomez under it. Make the catch and Walker with a, a bluff. Forced the bad throw. Or trying to draw the throw and did so. But let's look at this pitch again, Bob. Yeah, it really got in side on him, saw him off, and that's why the ball didn't go anywhere. If, uh, the ball would have just been out a little bit further. You got the hit of the bat to it. Might have gave that one a good ride. Garrett Jones, one of the two home run hitters in last night's game. Garrett put it in the bushes in center field. 
his seventh homer. Jones and Pedro Alvarez providing all the offense the Bucks would need in the 2-1 win last night. Pirates have won the series, taking the first two games. Going for a three-game sweep this afternoon. Ball and a strike to Garrett. Last pitched against the Pirates on the 14th of May here. He got a no decision. The first and Walker back. And two outs. See if Neil will run. One one pitch. And Jones pops it up. Betancourt calling for it and right on the foul line. He'll make the catch in fair territory. Head to the second inning at PNC Park. and softball day here on Root Sports. And a few weeks ago, we asked uh, regional teams to tell us via email or through Twitter why their youth baseball or softball team is unique or special. And here is our winning team. This is the Pirates from Accident, Maryland. And this is their head coach slash manager, Brian King. And um, first of all, first trip to PNT Park? Uh, no, numerous times. Numerous times, okay. Uh, and looking at some of the stats from your team, I know it's all about winning and learning how to lose. But your team didn't do a lot of losing this season. Tell me a little bit about them. No, we uh, had our second undefeated season in four years. These young men here have won, uh, I think their record as Little Leaguers is 63 and 3, 60 and 3, somewhere in that area. And in the four years total, two undefeated seasons, five regular season championships, and uh, I think four playoff championships. So. So their, their hard work pays off for them. Why don't you quickly introduce who you have here? Uh, over here, we got Peyton Carr, shortstop and pitcher. Live opening season here, Peyton threw a perfect game. No wow. no walks. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And right here, we've got second baseman Trey Rouse. He's also a pitcher. Come in and close the final game of our championship series. And here we have Carson King, catcher. And he's usually our number four hitter. Now, before I let you get back to the game, you guys have been winning for, you said, the last three or four years. So what's in the water in Accident, Maryland, that continues to produce such good baseball players and the Zoltan Z? <laughs> I tell you what, it's just a testament to their hard work. All they do is play ball at home, practice, practice, practice. They love the game, and it shows. Well, congratulations to all you guys, and enjoy the rest of the afternoon at PNC Park. All right, thank you, guys. We'll continue our look at youth softball and baseball throughout this afternoon's game. Guys? All right, Tim. So they had their own Jolly Roger. And saw that. Picture. Yeah. Well done. One out as Ricky Weeks popped out to Clint Barmas. 
Now Unieski Betancourt at the plate. He's got ball one on him. Tim McClellan, the first base umpire on the appeal. Young man pitched a perfect game on opening day. It's uh, nice to hear. Not easy to do. Great to see all the little leaguers and the youth league baseball and softball players here at the ballpark this afternoon as well. 2 0 pitch hit on the ground to Barmas. It's off his glove into left field. Well, not the start that Clint Barmas had hoped for today. Defensively, he's one of the better ones. I need to re repeat what I said in the first inning that when Charlie's on the mound, you know, the infield defense has to have a good day. Uh, you've got to make the plays. You're going to get challenged. There's going to be a lot of balls hit on the ground. A lot of chances out there. And so many times we have seen you know, Charlie, you know, how long he stays in the game, how long he pit, pitches uh, well, uh, just tied to either you know, ground ball base hits or, or even errors. And, and I think that's why I always notice how unlucky Charlie is because he gets so many ground balls. So when they go through the infield on the base hits, it, it just kind of Know, reinforces in my mind that like oh if that ball is just a little bit left to right it's an out. But Charlie gets so many ground balls and the odds are that a certain number of them are going to go through and be a base hit. It's not really bad luck. Martin Maldonado at the plate. Betancourt at first base. One out. And the pitch from Morton. Ground ball passed at diving Sanchez into right field. Betancourt will turn second. He'll be at third base, and the Brewers, with one out now, have runners at the corners. Uh, I'm going to point out something right here that it, the way the inning has gone for Charlie is exactly what I'm talking about. Ground ball is short, doesn't the play's not made, it's an error. Now you have the first baseman. Look at Scabby, he's, he's right on the back. Now, if he's playing back in his regular position, that's a routine ground ball right to the first baseman. But he's not. He has to be on the back because now there's a base runner that shouldn't be there. And so what has happened because of that? First and third. That, that, that's what's happened. So it, it's it's not always just the one play. That one play that's not made or made can have a big effect on the on the inning, even just if it, it's how many pitches uh, a pitcher has to throw. A nice block by the fort. Keeps everybody same spots. It's some uh, precipitation just starting over the ballpark here too. Good block by exactly Cameron. the way you're supposed to do it. Have that ball come up. Yeah, don't try to catch it. Let it hit you in the chest protector. First and third, one out. And pitch to Schaefer. Bunts it hard to the first baseman Sanchez. He's going to get a run in. Walker covering. And it's 1 nothing Milwaukee. So an RBI for Schaefer, his 11th. You know, Schaefer may be worried about hitting a ground ball, getting a double play, and not getting a, a run out of this inning. Decides to, to play it safe. Lay it down, bunt for a, a base hit. That's not going to be a double play, and uh, even if he doesn't get the base hit, which he didn't, you get a run home. Plus, you've moved the runner into scoring position. Two men out, and the pitcher Kyle Loesch at the plate. So the error directly results in a run here. And another thing, it's a kind of a minor deal, but. Again, you didn't hit a ground ball. You didn't get a hit to a double play. So you also have Loesch come to the plate, so you don't have your pitcher leading off next inning. There's a lot of reasons that the attempt at a punt base hit or was a pretty good play. Pedro had to decide on how to play that hop, and does a pretty good job on the backhand. Run comes in. One hit, one error, one nothing Brewers.
and he made me sit the first game. The first game went into extra innings, and I was on the bench, and I was so angry. You know, the game got delayed, it rained, and then we started over the next day, so I still couldn't get the chance to play, and I was just dying to play in this tournament. And uh, they got in a situation where the coach's son was supposed to hit. There was the bases loaded, there was two outs, and I'm just on the bench and I'm crying. I'm like, please let me hit. I want to play. I want to end this. Let's go. And then, and then like, they just see that I'm just so frustrated. It's the 10th inning. We're going with, like six innings. And uh, it was the next morning or whatever. So the base is loaded, two outs. I'm just, give me the bat. Like, I want to go. And the coach's son looks at me and he's like, let's, let's put Russ in. We need, we need Russ to go hit right now. So I get in a 3-2 count and I hit a home run. We win the game. And I was like, and I was just so emotional man I was like I told you man like let me play like I want this and it was just that was one of those memories that I had as a kid and uh, I just wanted to play and that's just kind of how I am as a person. Russell Martin getting the day off today but one of his memories certainly one he's passionate about loves to play the game so he's the guy at the plate Pedro Alvarez. Most of those guys in that dugout, or they're like that. They they don't like days like this where they have to sit, have the day off. They know it's necessary. To keep keep healthy and that sort of thing, especially when you're a catcher. But they would prefer to never miss an inning. A little later in the game, we're going to hear about Russell from the other side. We're going to talk to his little league coach. Pitch upstairs to Pedro. One ball and two strikes. Alvarez with a home run last night. His 20th. The last Pirate to get to 20 home runs this early in the season was Jason Bay in 06. Pedro with a 12 game hitting streak. A career best for him. Looking to extend that today. Brewers with a 1 0 lead. Betancourt reached on an error, then came home on a bunt by Logan Schaefer. In June, 10 home runs for Alvarez. 1947, Ralph Kiner had 14. Willie Stargell has done it three times in the month of June. But Pedro, the first to get to 10 this month since Richie Hebner in 1975. Down on strikes on a foul tip goes Alvarez. So one out for the Pirates on the second. I don't think uh, Pedro would understand how that ball was caught. <laughs> the look on his face, like he thought he got enough of it, or it, it shouldn't have been caught, but it was deflected right into the very web of the glove, almost like a snow cone. And it stayed there. Nice job by Maldonado. Rain coming down a little harder right now. As we look out from the North Shore over the river downtown, blue skies, white clouds, but they're coming in from behind us. The gray clouds are. And now some of the fans starting to scatter as the shower has created some moisture. Talking about there, skies look okay in the distance, but now the even under clouds, it's a beautiful yeah, city, isn't it? It is. There's some patches of blue right over downtown, but the gray now starting to head in that direction. These guys came prepared. Three and one now to Sanchez. They just put up their umbrella. You can tell it's been raining a lot lately. Allegheny had a little on the muddy side. A little flash of lightning as Gabby stepping out, calling time. Dan Potash has the uh, necessary equipment. He's got a lightning rod with cover on it. Yeah. Sanchez hits that in the air to left field. Logan Schaefer looking up into the raindrops. Makes the catch for out number two. Two men out. The AGH cam really slows the rain down. 
AGH cam does it, everything. It even tries to defy gravity, keep that water in the air. Not an easy ball to track, I'm sure. How long does a molecule of water stay in the air, Bob? Depends on how high the cloud is. And they're going to put the tarp on. Rain's coming down too hard right now, so the grounds crew is scrambling. A little bit of lightning in the area. Tim McClellan, the crew chief, talking to the starting pitcher, Kyle Loesch. And rain delays can be bad things for starting pitchers because you don't know how long the rain delay is going to be and you don't know if you're coming back in. The only time they're good things is if you haven't been pitching too well and you think, well, after a delay, if they send me back out there, maybe I'll be better. But in Loesch's case, he's pitching well right now. This was the last thing he wanted to see, and I'm sure he was asking, how long is this supposed to last? Well, the Empress being pushed along the river. See the infield starting to get shiny in that last shot. That you can tell how heavy the rain is and how quick it's coming down. And the thunder and lightning accompanying this rain. Where its players trying to stay dry as they hug the wall. Well, showers over the North Shore. As the grounds crew covers up the infield. We'll take a short time out, come back, give you an update. Let you know what's happening with this shower. one nothing Brewers from the bottom of the second inning. We've kind of dodged the bullet the last couple of days, but rain finally has delayed the Pirates and the Brewers here at PNC Park. The tarp being pulled out just a few moments ago with the Brewers leading it by a score of one to nothing. You know, it gives us a chance to kind of tell you a story about a young man who paid a visit to the Pirate dugout a couple of weeks ago. Of course, the Pirates get a lot of visitors, but trust me when I tell you that this young seven-year-old was special in more ways than one. Like many young boys, Connor Mahalik loves baseball, but the reason he loves the game differs from most other kids. When he was just three years old, Connor was diagnosed with a serious disease. The normal boy was very good at like, very, his reflexes were very good and he was really good at everything. And then um, he just fell over. So obviously we rushed him to the emergency room and then they uh, came back with, they did a CT and uh, they found a tumor on his brain. And then they, uh, then they told us that it was spread throughout his brain and spine. Doctors diagnosed Connor with medulla blastoma. He immediately underwent eight hours of surgery to remove the tumors and spent the following few months at the Children's Institute relearning how to walk, talk, and feed himself. Once he got back on his feet, he underwent years of intense chemotherapy and radiation to keep his cancer at bay. Today, at seven years old, Connor is still fighting for his life, but he's doing it in a way that amazes his father. You talk to him, you, you don't necessarily realize how sick he is, but he, he's, uh, it's just hard for him. It's just hard for him.
One of the few escapes for the Mahalics has been the baseball diamond. Connor plays for the Red Sox in Hampton Township, where he can forget about being a patient and enjoy being a teammate. That's what's nice about um, baseball especially, is he's very happy being around other little kids. And any sense of normalcy he gets helps him. And he's just, he surpassed anything the doctors told us that he, the doctors told us he would be nowhere near where he is physically, and he surpassed anything they thought would, would be possible. He's an inspiration to all the other kids. Everything's just the, uh, you know, even if, uh, you know, on bad days, as his dad will call them, he'll come, he'll show up to the games, and he, uh, he tries to give it his all, uh, no matter what, whether he's feeling good, whether he's feeling bad. It's just his love and passion for the game and, you know, his want to compete. I get goosebumps. Uh, absolute goosebumps when I see that kid out there who absolutely just loves the game, loves being out there, loves everything about it, loves being a part of the team. Connor says his favorite part about playing baseball is running the bases. He seems to have a secret weapon in his arsenal. I have a speed battery in me and it goes up to 102 speed. So I go up to that when I'm running. In addition to playing baseball in Hampton, Connor recently got the opportunity to watch baseball up close and personal when he was invited to Pirates batting practice at PNC Park. Jeff Carstens took Connor onto the field where he got to meet Andrew McCutcheon, Neil Walker, and all of their teammates. He even got a behind the scenes tour before the game. Just being involved, feeling like part of the team, he felt like part of the team because um, they were in there doing their pregame rituals. And I know a lot of them, you got, they're in concentrating and preparing for the game but they all every single one of them took time away from what they were doing to say hi and get down on his level and speak to him and it was very nice just a few days after that visit connor was the guest of honor at hampton park where hundreds of people came out for a fundraiser and a ball game yeah! with connor still fighting cancer steve mahalik is now devoting his life to spending time with his young son focusing on taking care of him on and off the ball field. My goal is that he plays out the rest of the season and enjoys baseball and take him wherever he would like to go and sort of like a wish list, whatever he wants to do, I'm going to do with him. And uh, My long-term goals is to have him with me as long as possible. So if I'll do whatever it takes, take him wherever I have to take him. And, I just pray a lot and we just hope for a miracle. And our thanks to the McCulloch family for allowing us to tell their story to our viewers at home today. Unfortunately, we are in a rain delay here at PNC Park as members of the Pirates have chose to, well, some have chosen to wait this one out in the dugout. When we return, Tim and Bob will talk to Russell Martin's Little League coach as our salute to youth baseball and softball continues on Root Sports.
to you by your Western PA Chevy dealers. Along with Bob Block, I'm Tim Neverett here at PNC Park, and we are getting set to resume this ball game on a Kids Day Sunday afternoon as these guys have sat through a lengthy rain delay, much uh, longer than I think they had anticipated when they showed up today. But this is what you do to get stretched out. Otis Day in the Knights. Carlos Gomez. Got a lot of dancing going around in the ballpark <laughs> by the last 15 minutes. And Gene Segura joins him. <laughs> a lot of a uh, lot of great tunes. The fans have been going crazy, and now those guys are out on the field. We're getting ready for baseball. A little bit softer now. So Michael McHenry will pick this ball game up at the plate, facing a new pitcher, Tyler Thornburg. There are two men out. In the bottom of the second inning, first pitch by Thornburg almost goes to the backstop. So Thornburg takes over for Kyle Loesch. Just the third appearance for Thornburg. So a two hour and 20 minute rain delay. And we're back at it. Two balls and no strikes. Now, different game. Both starting pitchers will be out of this one. Vin Mazzaro will be the new pitcher for the Pirates. Charlie Morton done after two innings. Give up one unearned run on two hits. Well, obviously, uh, uh, all season long, our bullpen has been very strong. And when it comes down to two bullpens battling each other, I, as I've said many times, I think we have the advantage. Although, in this case, uh, the Brewers have been spotted a run. That might even things out a little bit. But bullpens, uh, they, they've pitched well. So we have to uh, think that right now, our bullpen can do a better job than theirs. Friday, their bullpen was pretty busy, so they've been busy this week. The Brewers, the Buckos, a lot of success out of the pen. 2 2. Strike three call on the outside edge of the plate. And the Pirates are done in the second. We'll head to the third inning at PNC Park. Brewers one, Pirates nothing. Ball on Route Sports is brought to you by Toyota. Now's the time to go places with Toyota. Visit buyatoyota.com for special offers. And by PNC for the achiever in you. Let's go, Bucks. Others have braved the rains. Still have the, the dome on the uh, floating stadium out there, but. Nice afternoon has turned out to be. And Vin Mazzaro now takes over. For Charlie Morton, Pirates trailing one nothing to the Brewers, heading into the top of the third inning, following a two-hour and twenty-minute rain delay. Vin's got some pretty nice uh, numbers working uh, on on his season. Nothing really uh, out of shape there. Maybe like to get that opposition batting average down more to the mid two hundreds, but that would be. Nitpicking, but that's kind of what's left when you look at the stats of uh, 
most of these pitchers on this team. If, you, if you're looking for something that's not good, you're going to be nitpicking. There's not much there. Well, Mazzaro will face the top of the Brewers order. For each guy, Oki, who is 0 for 1, he fly to center field in the first. Oki, a little tapper. Then throws him out. Dan Potash down there where the grounds crew comes out. To, how about those field conditions, Dan? Yeah, Tim, you know, you talked about the rain delay being about two hours and 20 minutes. They dropped about 50 bags of clay slash dirt, or as Bob Walk and I like to call it, kitty litter, on the field, each bag weighing about 50 pounds. So that's a pretty heavy load to get this infield dried. Again, the tarp was pulled over a little bit late, so the, the field or the uh, infield got a little moist, uh, so they had to dry it out just a little bit. But 50 pounds per bag, 50 bags, that's, uh, that's a lot of kitty litter, guys. Yeah, it is, and they basically had to redo the whole field, as it would be for the start of a game, except with the extra kitty litter on it. Yeah, we knew, uh, you know, looking at the field when they were putting the tarp on, that it was going to take a while to get it going because it was real shiny, a, a ton of water already on it. They did a great job getting it ready. Mark Barnes throws out Gene Segura, two men out for the Milwaukee Brewer. Now the infield probably going to be a little soft now because of all this. Moisture and the, especially the dirt, because there's a, an extra layer out there of, of soft dirt that you have to deal with. So the infielders are going to be a little, little leery in the first few ground balls to see how it plays. See a puddle in the north side notch. They had to do extensive work out there. They had a lot of water gathering along the warning tracks. There's still just a little bit remaining in front of the 410 marker. Here's Carlos Gomez. Takes a strike. Gomez entertaining uh, us during the rain delay. Barrel league leader stat, leaders in triples. Gomez with nine. Marte and Segura with eight each. Barrel driven to be better. Right down to third base. Nice play by Alvarez. Three ground balls for Vin Mazzaro. Looked out by Pedro right there. Hot dog up to Steve Blash in the radio booth today. Pirates down a run, one nothing. Bottom of the third inning, Clint Barmus leads off. Barmus takes a strike. Be Barmus, then Mazzaro, pitcher, then back to the top of the order. And this one popped up. Segura, the shortstop, backpedaling, still backpedaling. Called off by Gomez. And there's one out. Well, Gomez came a long way for that one. By the time he uh, shoveled that ball off, uh, he just stepped from the infield dirt. Send us your comments, questions, and thoughts. 
tweet us using the hashtag Bucks Booth. Again, it's Youth Baseball and Softball Day. You got a story about Youth Baseball or Softball. You can tweet that to us. What you did during the rain delay. And what you think of this first place Bucko team? Hashtag Bucks Booth. Number of teams here today. One and one to Mazzaro. Chops that one foul. One and two. So the new pitchers facing one another right now. Thornburg came in for Kyle Osh facing Mazzaro, who came in for the starter, Charlie Morton. One two pitch. And Mazzaro goes down swinging. Two man out for the Pirates in the third. All right, let's play name that pirate. Which pirate was this in Little League? Played for the Rockies. Any idea? No, I have no idea. So we got to have the reveal here. Garrett Cole. Oh, okay. He looks a little bigger now. Yeah. See the real resemblance. Probably didn't throw quite as hard back then. Doubt it. But he probably threw harder than the rest of his teammates. Perhaps. In the dugout, he is scheduled to go on Thursday afternoon, the 4th of July, against the Phillies. And Marte pops this one up. Ricky Weeks is called off, and Gomez makes that catch. Tyler Thornburg, a seven pitch, bottom of the third. We'll head to the fourth, 1 0 Milwaukee. Softball programs around Western PA. First, we head down to Benucci Field, where the Beachview Pirates play as part of a joint effort between City Parks and the Pittsburgh Pirates that provides kids ages four through eight the chance to play baseball. There are 46 kids playing in Beachview, but there are over 2,500 kids participating throughout the city. The big league Pirates provide equipment, hats, and jerseys so that these kids can have lots of fun while learning the fundamentals of the game. We'll continue to look at youth area programs, both in baseball and softball, throughout the afternoon, weather permitting, of course. Uh, uh, please, please, Dan. Yeah, yeah, no Come more. So. Stop it. <laughs> well, it's kind of neat to see those uniforms with the big league players' names on the back. And as we look at the pitcher's mod, Tim McClellan, the crew chief, is he looking at the glove of Vin Mazzaro? Yeah, they're checking out the... Uh, like they're trying to get some uh, some knots in there. They don't like the length of his strings. So they're trying to take care of that. Well, talk about nitpicking. That's something you never see. You hardly ever see. Let's see if Garth Orge. Yeah, it looked like the uh, Brewers first base coach asked McClellan to tell David Rackley, the home plate umpire. McClellan, of course, is the crew chief. The, Longtime veteran umpire. Marty Foster at second, Marvin Hudson at third, but 
McClellan over there doing some glove work. Is that really going to affect a hitter? Absolutely not. That's ridiculous. I mean, I've never seen that. I either. mean, look at that. Is that that's going to going to cause a problem? One run on two hits. Brewers scored a run in the second inning. I mean, it was the first time inning he was out there, he threw five pitches. They put the ball in play very quickly. They must have been seeing the ball okay. You'd think so. So Mazzara will face Juan Francisco, the cleanup hitter, Ricky Weeks, and Unieski Betancourt. Shift is on as Francisco tries to punt his way to third, or at least punt in that direction. And you always get the questions, Bob. Why don't you see more guys try that? I guess the situation has to warrant it. But. Well, if he bunts the ball, you know what? What it's funny about his effort just then. Here, I'll wait till this pitch. I'll let you know. Puts this one to center field, going back McCutcheon. He's getting quick outs, isn't he? He is. Like two pitches. Mazzaro's throwing seven pitches. He has four outs. Francisco played the bunt like he's. Putting for a base hit, correct? Correct. You know, squaring around late, you know, trying to like lay it down like he's trying to trick somebody. That's not what you're trying to do there. There is no third baseman. There's nobody to trick. Go ahead and square around and bunt the ball hard to third. There's nobody there. See that he I mean I I, I understand why he's doing it, and I think, well yeah, that, that's a good idea. You got a base hit. Go for it. But the the execution is all wrong there. You're not trying to trick anybody. Just go ahead and square around, bunt the ball firm down third baseline. There's nobody to field the ball. There's nobody to trick. Ricky Weeks, nothing and one the count to the second baseman. One ball and one strike. Weeks 0 for 1. Popped up to Barmus to start the second inning. One and one to weeks. And 232. He's brought yeah, his average way up. Amazing. He's been hit it very well after just a horrible early season slump. For him to be up uh, in the 230s is pretty amazing right now. I mean, he was uh, having a, a difficult time really hitting it fair balls and getting balls put in place. Strikeouts were just way up. Not now. Uh, just flipping back in the scorebook here, Bob. We'll go back to the 26th of May. That was when we were in Milwaukee on a Sunday game. Pirates won at five to four. Weeks started that game with a 171 average, and it had been lower than that. Oh yeah. 169 the day before. Pretty impressive about what he's been able to do. Two and two the count to Weeks. And strike three call. Weeks down on strikes looking. Two men out. It's that porcupine glove he's got. Like he might have got a little bit of a call with that pitch. It was just borderline right on the edge. Throws Weeks up. Unieski Betancourt. Third baseman. First ball swinging, pops it up. And for Vin Mazzaro, an eight pitch inning, piggybacked on a five pitch third inning. Six up, six down for Mazzaro.
Sports Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Barrel Automotive. We're driven to be better. And by Levin Furniture and the all-new Levin Mattress Stores. For a great deal on a new bed, shop Levin's. Let's go box. Taking a look at uh, Twitter. What does it take to stay focused during a lengthy rain delay like we just had? You can tweet us also at Root Sports Pit, hashtag Bucks Booth. Two hours and 20 minutes of a rain delay. What does it take to keep focus? Well, the guys really aren't focused during a rain delay. You know, we were talking about all you know, the dancing and stuff to go along. There's card games or they're you know, inside. Well, maybe not nowadays. Now it's probably video games. But in the old days, there was all, all kinds of card games going on. Guys really aren't, weren't thinking at all about uh, you know, the, the game. You, you aren't really focused on it. There is no game, so you're off doing whatever you want to do. Uh, the only guy that's really thinking much about it is the starting pitcher. He's wondering how long the rain delay is going to be. So, can he go back out there or not? But as far as as far as staying focused, uh, in between uh, or while you're waiting for the uh, game to get going, they're uh, like I said, in the old days. It just card games all over. Guys reading magazines. That's about it. Neil Walker flies to Logan Schaefer in left field to start the fourth. See, baseball the really is a different sport than a lot of other sports. But I think it's really important that you, you know, I guess you have to stay focused and all that. But baseball, I mean, everybody has played it. You know what it's like. You know, while you're out there on the field doing something, you need to be you know, locked in and paying attention to what it is, whether you're hitting, playing shortstop, pitching, catching, whatever. But sitting in the locker room and the game's uh, an hour away. Not a whole lot to do. Well, one pitch to McCutcheon. There's two on the right field side foul ball. Used to figure out a way to you know, get somebody to one of the clubhouse guys or something and sneak down to the concessions, get some hot dogs and bring up things like that. Of course, nowadays they have uh, you know, kitchens and then chefs right there to cook for them, but a one-handed uh, Grab. One ball, two strikes now to Andrew. Yeah, now there's more uh, gourmet culinary delights yeah. at yeah. the concessions. And the clubhouse. <laughs> Four star kitchen in this one, or yeah. five star kitchen in this one. How many stars are you supposed to get? Whatever the top number is, that's what they've got in the Pirates clubhouse. And all the club has the pirates everywhere in baseball is is like that now. It really is a uh, I guess an important part of the clubhouse now. You can see that in spring training facilities. Something that the, uh, the players look for. It's expected. Some nachos, Bob? Yeah, you would send away for nachos. Whatever kind of little things you could think of. It'd be a foam finger, some pink cotton candy, not blue. Nah, not much cotton candy got eight in the clubhouse. Here's the 2 2 to McCutcheon. Uh, chopper foul. There you go. Bob doesn't like that. He wants to ban the blue. I don't want to ban the blue, I just prefer pink. I don't want to take away people's choice. They can have blue if they want. Don't bring it to me. Two ball, two strike pitch. That's when we get another. Sound like a hit one of our crowd mics. Dan was ready for it. Let's get the cameraman there to protect him. Dave Nichols in audio. He's there to protect him. Take a perfect shot for Danny to get hit down there. Two two pitch. Count is full three and two. So Dan is actually working right there in the business. They call that white balancing. <laughs> working hard down there in the pit. Three two pitch. This one is hooking. Plenty of distance and he hit it up into the suites. Hey. Got all of that one. He mashed it just a little bit too quick. A hanging breaking pitch. 
That was like a, a, an apple just hanging on a low branch of the tree. Payoff pitch from Tyler Thornburg coming. Walked him. One on and one out for the Bucks. Fans, Pirates games are more fun in groups. Ask about how each member of your group can take home a Pirates cap or Roberto Clemente jersey with just the price of a ticket. Give your group a night to remember. Book your group outing by calling 1 800 buy bucks or go to pirates.com slash groups. And bring a big group out. A bunch of groups out here today. A lot of youth baseball, softball teams, and other groups. Garrett Jones at the plate. Strike one as he skies this ball out of play. Last night, Jones hit a home run. Went to one of his favorite places in this ballpark, the Bushes. For Jones, that proved to be the game winning run. Parents got both of their runs last night on solo home runs. Pedro Alvarez had the other. Bucks down a run in the fourth inning. Dutchin has stolen 16 times. He's been caught just four times. Well, maybe that home run that Garrett hit will get that power ball going with him a little bit more. He had been a while uh, in between long ones. Strike two to Jones. Is that home run. Just number seven. Hopefully that means he's going to hit a few in a bunch here soon. Cutting off of first, one out, 0-2 pitch. One ball, two strikes. Not on the uh, well, as with a lot of our players, but Garrett is certainly one of them on that road trip. Really looked like you're having a lot better at bats. Was uh, centering up a lot of baseballs. Even when he wasn't getting hits, he made a lot of hard outs. Jay really has a. The guy's swinging pretty well right now. Two and two. Jay Bell, the hitting coach, he's helped out. The assistant hitting coach, Jeff Branson. Jay Bell back with the Buckos. Here comes the two two pitch. Nope. Throw to first instead. Back easily was McCutcheon. Yeah, they're thinking that with the count getting the two and two, maybe Cutch would be running. Pedro Alvarez in the on deck circle waiting to go. Jones strikes out. Garrett is 0 for 2 this afternoon. And yeah, Garrett got caught trying to pull a ball. Off speed breaking ball that came in over the outside corner. And Garrett just, just too far out in front of us. The head of the bat is not really going over the top of the ball. It was actually the baseball was passing off the end of the bat. Just too far away. Garrett was a little too quick. No two outs, and here's Pedro. He struck out in the second inning. Johnson gets back. Alvarez with a career best 12 game hitting streak going. Lower outfield point very deep right now. Two outs and speed at first. Extra base hit, they want ball getting in between them. I'm not sure if uh, Cutch would run right away. Maybe if the count got to two strikes. Ray Alvarez has been hitting the ball. He's kind of in scoring position right now. Good looking pitch there for strike one. And now, when you see Alvarez fall behind in the count right away, now perhaps you would think, okay, I'll take a shot. Pedro uh, has been hitting the ball over the fence uh, quite often. 
Or just getting on base. Being your scoring position when he's up. One ball and one strike to Alvarez. One ball, one strike to Pedro. Balls it back, it's one and two. And Pedro with ten home runs this month. So half of his home runs have come during the month of June. Most by a pirate since Richie Hebner hit ten in June in 1975. One, two. Yeah, almost uh, nine of his 20, almost half have come in the daylight. Yeah. Sun's shining right now. Let's get one over the fence. Four home runs in April, six in May, ten this month. Final day of the month. Fans getting a little impatient with Tyler Thornburg, and now Andrew McCutcheon wants time. He needs a little. Little cleanup session here. Parrot. Yeah, I think the hand on the hip says it all, doesn't it? He's not too happy. Thornburg, 24 year old, North Charleston, South Carolina. On the hill for the Milwaukee Brewers. The end of the bat foul. The last left handed hitter for the Pirates to have this many home runs by the end of June in a season was Brian Giles in 2000. That was even two and two. You were saying earlier, Bob, you thought if it got to two strikes, maybe deeper in the count, we might see McCutcheon go. Or does he just stay put and let Pedro swing it? No, I think that you know, if, if Pedro was in the driver's seat, ahead in the count, then you stay where you're at. But at any point where he gets behind the count, it's very likely that he'd have a green light. Well, right to Francisco. We'll step on the bag and the Pirates are done in the fourth. The Bucks still without a hit this afternoon. Trail the Brewers one nothing. Your prostate cancer Friday, July 19th. He'll begin the 600 mile journey on his Can Am Spider motorcycle riding round trip from Pittsburgh to Cincinnati. All to raise awareness and funding for prostate cancer research. The Pirate Parrot can't do this by himself. Go to pirates.com slash cruise to donate or to sign up to ride along with it. 
One run on two hits for the Brewers. Zeros right now for the Pirates. The first four innings. Top of the fifth. Martin Maldonado, the catcher facing Vin Mazzaro. It was ball one to him. 1 0 to Maldonado. Reached on a base hit in the second inning. He has one of the two Milwaukee hits. Two and zero. Oh. Unesky Betancourt reached on an error by Clint Barmas in the second inning with one out. Then Maldonado had a hit, and Logan Schaefer, who was in the on deck circle, punted to first base, and Betancourt, who had gone down to third base, was able to come in. It was not a suicide squeeze. It was just a run attempt, and the runner went. Safety squeeze. Run. Safety squeeze. Or just him button for a base hit. They basically are the same play. Hundred third is going to take off uh, unless he can uh, react to a ball bunt straight back to the mound. You don't want to run on that. But if it's a good bunt put down, uh, the corner infielder is going to have to field, and you're going to score. Three one pitch over towards center field and McCutcheon there to drive. One gone in the Milwaukee half of the fifth. Now here is Logan Schaefer. Schaefer got an RBI but was out three to four on the bunt attempt. Schaefer getting extended time in left field with Ryan Braun on the disabled list with a bad thumb. And you lose your top RBI guy in Braun. And Schaefer not that kind of a player offensively, so he bats in the eighth spot. Well, one pitch. It's inside, one ball, one strike. Brewers started the day 32 and 47, 17 and a half games behind the first place Pirates in the Central Division. Walker plays a good hop. And there are two men out. Ben Mazzaro has retired the first eight Brewers he's faced. Today's AGH Sports Medicine injury update. Wandy Rodriguez has been shut down from throwing after experiencing continued tightness in his left forearm through on Friday. He's been on the DL since June 6th. Injury update brought to you by Allegheny Sports Medicine, official medical provider of the Pirates. So Wandy's still out of action and no telling when we'll see him back in action. Visiting with Francisco Liriano, who was in action last night, did very well. Mazzaro, well, it's doing the good work that you just mentioned and, and being very efficient so far. Just 23 pitches. Is it doing absolutely exactly what you hope for when you have to go to the bullpen early in a ball game? Not only eating up innings, but getting a, a lot of outs while doing so. Tyler Thornburg making some pretty solid contact. The pitcher. 167 career average. Not the, a long career in the big leagues though. Limited duty but doesn't appear to be afraid to swing the bat. He's back into the seats. And Mazar would like to throw one that misses the bat of Thornburg here. Well, he needs to throw one away from him and then off the plate away is a 0 2 count. You know, that quit throwing him strikes. <laughs> That's once, <coughs> excuse me, once you get to 0 2, you gotta you gotta leave the strike zone. In the air to the left and Marte drifting back. Marte on the track makes the catch. 26 pitches for Vin Mazzaro, 20 of them have been strikes. He's retired nine straight.
the little things like that where, you know, when you're a little kid and you're playing and all your friends are there and you're playing on the teams and you're winning championships. I mean, you know, I was on, luckily on, you know, some teams when I was younger that we would go undefeated and go all the way and win everything. And, you know, those kind of memories are always fun. And, you know, you, always, you never really forget those. Gabby Sanchez on some Little League memories. Today is youth baseball and softball day on Root Sports. On for the big leaguers. They've got a lot of Little League memories too. Pirates looking for a hit. Trailing one to nothing. Bottom of the fifth inning. Facing right hander Tyler Thornburg. Kids want to see a hit. They want to see a Bucko win today. He's ready to make a grab. He wants to see a foul ball. Got the glove with him. Pirates have won eight straight, looking for nine in a row, looking to sweep the Brewers today after taking the first two games of this series. Brewers have lost four straight. There's one of Gabby's Little League photos there in the lower third graphic. Ball one to Sanchez. Gabby flied to left field in the second inning. Hit the ball up in the air. Logan Schaefer pulled it down, and then the grounds crew pulled the tarp. We waited two hours and 20 minutes for the game to resume with two outs in the bottom of the second. He was the last hitter before the rain delay. That's the thing about all the ballparks today. You want to go take some swings during a rain delay? Sure, go right ahead. Beautiful batting cages to do it in. Those guys to take swings in between innings. Even behind the uh, the the dugout, uh, they have a little room just right there where you can go hit balls into a screen off a tee and work on your mechanics. Two one to Gabby. Right to Segura. One out. Take a look at Twitter. This was taken on my first Little League outing in 1996 at Three Rivers Stadium. Oh, that picture. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> That's great. You can look at that. That brings back some memories. Look at the background there. Tweet us and use the hashtag Boxboot. New memories are being made today. Similar type pictures being taken all over this ballpark. One and over Michael McHenry struck out looking in the second inning. Yeah, I think he did get a foul ball. Most definitely. Two fouls it back. We need to get this offense going. McHenry wants to get that average over two. One one from Thornburg. Side. I like the uh, the battle of the bullpens. I mentioned I thought that, that kind of tipped things in our favor, but so far it's not working out. Although Mazzaro, he's doing his part. McHenry to left field, and Logan Schaefer will run it down. Well, a couple of balls hit on the nose so far. Nothing for him. Line out the short. Line out the left. Well, the Bucks want to get. Mazzaro some runs here the way he's pitched out of the pen. Oh, definitely cracked. A good part of the strike zone for McHenry. Well, Clint Barmas up there. He's 0 for 1. He flied to center. Two down, bases empty. Pirates half of the fifth inning. This little league photo was easy to pick out. One and one. You played for a couple of organizations in the little league, huh? Well, I think everybody did. And when you're seven and eight, you play for one team. And you graduate to the next age group and then the next age group. And 
until there's no age group to go to. First hit for the Pirates, and it's down to the corner. Barnes will have an extra base. Two out double for Clint Barmas. Weren't able to get a ball that was up and in and turn on it. Sure they were trying to jam him there because Hans threw that ball very quickly and get the head of the bat to it. So Mazzaro a chance to uh, knock the run in himself. Double number six for Barmas. Mazzaro 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. Pitch way off the plate, so Martin Maldonado goes out to talk with Tyler Thornburg. Uh, pretty good time for a hit right now, Vin. See if he can help his own cause. Barmas in scoring position at second base. Then needs to just be thinking and begin shorten up the swing, just avoid the strikeout. Hit a fair ball, maybe he'll fall in somewhere. Maybe it'll be a ground ball through a hole. But give yourself a chance. Get the ball hit out there fair somewhere. I'm just taking contact. Well, maybe take a next pitch for ball four. Well, right now, uh, I'm sure he's got the take sign. Right. Can you get it again here? I would think so. Three balls and a strike. Thornburg's pitch. He's in there for strike two. So now Mazzaro will have to take the bat off the shoulder. Yep. It's just you know looking uh, for something straight, and it's got to be in that strike zone. Try to punch it out there somewhere. There you go. Base hit from Mazzaro. Barnes coming around third. He'll be held. And then Mazzaro comes through with a base hit. Rick Sofield holds up. Barnes at third base. Pirates now with runners at the corners. He definitely did his job. Just get a ball put out there in fair territory somewhere. It might find a hole. Might dunk in. He dunks one out at the right field. Now Marte is going to have a chance. You see Barmas being held up there at third base. A tying run at third base. Two outs and Starling Marte at the plate. He's 0 for 2. Takes the ball. Pretty good at bat for Vin Mazzaro. Yeah, very good. Yeah. He laid off some close pitches, got to way ahead in the count three and oh. Got to take sign twice. Nothing you do about that. You got to take in that situation. You're a pitcher. And then when he, you get the three and two, your chance to do something. He's going to come in the strike zone. It's going to be straight. You got to get a put in play, and he did. Excellent job. Presented the go-ahead run. Harris down one nothing. One ball and one strike to Starling Marte. Thornburg's pitch. Swung on, hit to right field. Will it carry? No. And Ioki tracks it down. The Bucks get two hits and leave two. On to the sixth inning at PNC Park.
for the Cincinnati Reds who start action four and a half behind the first place Pirates in the Central the Cardinals just a game back and they now have a one run lead over Oakland in the fourth at five to four the Cubs in Milwaukee 15 and a half and 17 and a half out one nothing Brewers top of the sixth inning each team with a pair of hits and the top of the order to do up for the Brewers on this kids day Sunday afternoon. Ben Mazzaro has faced nine men in the ball game. He has thrown just 26 pitches, 20 of them for strikes. Facing Aoki, who is 0 for 2. It was the first guy that uh, he was facing, and he kind of set the tone. Uh, Aoki likes to go in a deep count, see a lot of pitches. He's got a very good eye, but one pitch, one out. And it's been like that through the lineup. Now he's back to Aoki again. Down the left field side, it's slicing. And there, right near the line, is Starling Marte for another quick out. That's 10 in a row, sat down by Vin Muzaro. MLB.tv celebrates 11 years with new low yearly prices. Watch every out of market game live on over 350 supported mobile and connected devices in HD quality with MLB.tv Premium. Visit MLB.tv today. MLB.tv baseball everywhere. The one out here is Segura, who is 0 for 2. Bounced out twice to the infield. Once to Walker and once to Barmas. Walker made a great play on him back in the first inning. Barmas dove for it up the middle, and Walker was right behind him to make a backhanded stab at it. Just barely got Segura at first base. Now a comeback. Snared by Mazzaro. Two outs. Four pitches. Two outs. Outstanding job. So two down quickly. Nice play by Vin. Slowing it down for you on the AGH cam. Need to get Vince some runs. The way he's been pitching, he deserves them. First ball swinging is Gomez. Another quick inning for Vin Mazzaro. He has retired 12 straight Brewers. Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go, Bucks. Here's our Day Automotive this day in Pirates history. On this day in 1909, the Pirates played the first ever game at Forbes Field. It was the first stadium of its kind built out of concrete and steel and would be the Pirates' home for the next 60 years. 30,388 showed up for that day as the Pirates lost to the Cubs. Three to two. Thanks to Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. 
Turned into a nice day here. Long rain delay, two hours and 20 minutes after two and two thirds innings were played. One nothing. Pirates, just a pair of hits. Clint Barmas and Vin Mazzaro, the owners of those hits. Hey, maybe we need a couple solo home runs. Huh? That's what happened Went last night. See what Walker can do here. Number two in the batting order today, leading off this inning. Walker, McCutcheon, and Jones. One and zero to Walker. Seemed like the Pirates started to get to Thornburg a little bit last inning, getting some of the outs were hard outs. Segura playing him up the middle. There's one gone for the Bucks in the sixth. And they're uh, getting ahead of the bat to the baseball, uh, but not getting anything for it right now. But that will change if they continue to hit the ball hard. A couple of things here. They want to get Charlie Morton off the hook. He's responsible for the lone run in the game so far. They get Mazzaro, who's retired 12 straight, an advantage. One to know to McCutcheon. He walked in the fourth inning, was stranded. Back in the first inning, he flied to center. Two balls and no strikes. Been a little uh, careful with McCutcheon ever since he hit that long foul ball up into the sweets. You've seen a strike since then. There's one. This one to right field and reach got Ioki is right there. Line outs have we had in the last say, six oh. or seven hitters. Several. <laughs> Several. That's the third over the last two innings. Bucks and PNC Bank teaming up to bring you discounted PNC check card dates every Friday and weekday matinee games this season. All PNC Bank customers who use their check card get up to ten dollars off outfield box, lower outfield box, outfield reserve, or grandstand seats. Purchase tickets at the PNC Park ticket windows or visit pirates.com/pnc check card. The last time Garrett Jones was uh, up. Struck out by being too far out in front of the off speed stuff. And Garrett loves to stay back and go through the middle. That's what he always tells himself as he gets into you know, the batter's box, no matter who is pitching. And he's probably really con concentrating on that right now. And again, out in front, you saw him off balance. Uh, most of his weight was way forward as he swung and missed that off speed pitch. But his game plan is always middle of the field. He's not trying to pull the ball, at least not uh, consciously making a, an effort to do that. Sometimes your body uh, doesn't really answer the, the helm very well. Jay Bell, Jay Bell looking on. To one pitch. And that is a strike call. But that's one of the reasons why you do see. Uh, Garrett had a lot of home runs towards center field ever since he got here. We've noticed that that's where a lot of his long balls go. He likes the bushes. And one of his longest home runs he's ever hit was to center field in Philadelphia. Chopper right up front. Maldonado throws down to first, and the Pirates retired in order in the sixth inning. Head to inning number seven on this Kids Day Sunday afternoon, one nothing Brewers.
One run on two hits for Milwaukee. No runs on two hits for the Pirates. Starting a seventh inning. And what has turned out to be a sunny Sunday afternoon at PNC Park. Now, well, uh, Francisco leading off an inning with no third baseman. We saw him try to bunt one time today. Will he uh, try and take advantage of that and lay the ball down? Nope, he's going to swing. It's inside for ball one. Francisco 0 for 2. But this is when I, I think hitters should think about that is when there's you know, nobody out and they're leading off an inning. Why not you know, go ahead and just accept the single instead of trying to hit the ball in the river? And with two outs? No. Absolutely, you're trying to. Hit a home run, trying to at least get a double extra base hit. But, but right now, with this close ball game, would have been a perfect time for Francisco to just to try to get a, that bunt base hit to the third base. There's no third baseman right now. And he could have started the inning out uh, with the Brewers having a base runner. Two one pitch coming from Mazzaro. And there's another thing that will happen too, and we've seen it with Garrett Jones. Is yeah. if you do that a couple of times, then that's going to take the defense out of the shift. They're going to have to honor that. They'll move somebody over, and then you don't have to worry about the shift anymore. Garrett, who has got a couple bunt base hits, there's the shift. You can see there's no third baseman. And once Garrett did that a couple of times, forced the other teams to come out of their shift. Popped up. McCutcheon wants it. A lot of sun up there. He's got it for out number one in the seventh inning. Well, now it's time for the whiff. Brought to you by Head and Shoulders. Now with Old Spice. And Ricky Weeks, part of that equation. This might be the longest at bat Rosario's had all day. He had to throw a few extra pitches. Got a pitch for strike two. Call right on the inside corner. Went right back there. Same spot for strike three. Perfect spot. Just knocked a flake off the edge of the plate. <laughs> that was in the fourth, and then Weeks popped up to Barnes in the second inning. Here he pops up to Jones, and another quick out for Vin Mazzaro. He's been getting a lot of uh, first, second pitch outs. Picks up another one. 14 straight Brewers have been retired by Mazzaro since taking over for Charlie Morton after the rain delay. Ray Searage went out there and just said, Get everybody out. That's what he's done. Sea Rage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ray was telling us uh, the last road trip about his boat. His old boat. Named it Sea Rage. Same way you spell Searage. Ray keeping his notes. Uses a lot of different colors of ink, obviously. That's one of those four way pens. Two old pitch. That core fouls it back. Two and one. That course starting at third base today. Aramis Ramirez the day off. I wonder what color he runs out of first. Hopefully it's the outs. Two one. Two two. Have to find out what what color he uses for different things. And he's keeping score and keeping his notes. And when uh, Steve. Uh, Steve Blass uses uh, two different colors to do his scorecard. He uses two pens. He uses. There's uh, Brian Morris warming up in the bullpen. He uses black, and then I think uh, base hits he does in red. I think Greg's got one of those four color pens that he uses. Three two pitch. Or foul. Good. Good. 
I have two shades of black ink. The darker is when I press down harder to write. Sorry. <laughs> and then you, uh, where's your pen? Oh, I'm lost. It's probably my bag, I guess. Where's your bag? It's in the back behind the curtain. Okay. Back with the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> White drive to left field. <laughs> and a nice running catch by Starling Marte. 13 pitches that time for Vin Mazzaro. He's retired 15 straight. Stretch time at PNC Ladies Park. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite you now to stand and join the Pirates and Major League Baseball as we offer support to our troops here and abroad. Here to lead us with God Bless America is Sydney Hutchko. Joining her on the field today, representing the Wounded Warrior Project, is Corporal Christopher Morris of the United States Marine Corps. Corporal Morris served in Afghanistan in 2009 when his convoy was struck by an IED, resulting in multiple injuries and hearing loss. Corporal Morris is currently attending West Virginia University, majoring in psychology where one day he hopes to aid returning soldiers suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. And we are thrilled to have him on the field with us today. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans wide with foam, God bless America, my home sweet home, God bless America. My home, sweet home. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to follow the bouncing Eaton Park Smiley Cookie and join everyone watching at home on Root Sports as we sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. of the Pittsburgh Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Back at PNC Park with Bob Walk and Dan Potash, Tim Never with you. Bottom of the seventh inning, Pirates trailing one to nothing. Pedro Alvarez will lead off and Gabby Sanchez and Michael McHenry. Some right-hander Tyler Thornburg 
Who's come out and done a nice job after Kyle Loesch left after an inning and two thirds due to the rain delay. Strike one to Pedro. Pedro 0 for 2. Strikeout victim in the second inning and then he bounced out to Francisco at first base in the fourth. One outside. Justin Wilson looks like he's getting ready to go. And John Axford on the left for the Brewers. And Tony Watson looks like he's going to climb up on top of one of the mounds. Start getting loose. Cut by Pedro, one and two. Fastball swing and a changeup. Fastball looking to hit it a long, long way with that swing. Another changeup. Pedro has seven RBIs in his last four games against the Brewers. Hitting 330 this month. He goes down on strikes for the second time today. He's 0 for 3. Any fastballs to hit, didn't get any really hardly any good strikes to hit that at bat. All slow stuff, curveballs, change ups. One out, here's Gabby Sanchez. All one to Gabby. Just four hits total with both teams. And Pitching has been outstanding for both sides. Seven home runs on the season for Sanchez. That's the same number he had all of 2012. It looks like a sure thing for Gabby that not only surpassed last year's total, but should breeze by it. And ball one strike. Setting his pitch in the, in the glove. That's a movement. And Gabby drills one deep to left field. Way back. And it is caught. Highway robbery by Schaefer taking a home run away from Gabby Sanchez. Oh, just an outstanding play by Schaefer. Beautiful. Talk about uh, you know the, the little league uh, players we've had on today. This is a little leaguer's dream to be able to run and make a catch like this. Ball is over the sign for sure. This is one you practice uh, in your backyard. Have your buddies throw balls up by the fence and jump up and try to rob home runs. And he did it. <laughs> Big part of the game. That would have tied it up. Up over the fence. Bring it back. Almost taste the beef jerky. <laughs> You're referring to extra innings. <laughs> <laughs> McHenry fouls this one off. Well, you know that it's, it's a situation where we only have two hits, but for the last few innings, they have been hitting some balls right on the nose and just getting nothing for them. The line outs, hard hit ground balls, balls up over the fence, brought back. Just got to keep plugging away. Hope they start falling in. Back of the catch. One and two to the fort. Fort 0 for two. Top of the helmet. Oh man, that was close. Inches, not not inches, an inch. An inch. Well, two and two. Thornburg delivers. Well, with uh, McKinnon's helmet, if if he thought he brushed it and didn't get the call, he could say, "Look at the ball." 
It's got pine tar all over it. Yeah, he keeps the pine tar all over that thing. Huh? Anything, well, might have stuck to it. If anything hits that helmet, it's going to have a mark. He's got it covered. Gooey, sticky pine tar. I said to him in Altoona the last uh, tune-up before opening day, I saw that helmet on the field. And I said, you know, we're going to get some pine tar around here. He said, have no idea. Yeah, he loads his helmet up with it. That's a rag looking thing there. It's a kind of a, a towel. It's got a vinyl type covering around the outside of it. And that's where they pour the, uh, the pine tar in there. And the, the final. Oh, I got it. No doubt about that one. Breaking ball didn't break. Well, McKenna will take it as he trots down to first base. Ball just did did curve. McHenry just turning his back, letting it hit right the very uh, top of the uh, the fort. What would that be called? Uh, the rampart? Is it? What is that up there? Up there? Yeah, the very top part of the fort. Yeah, I guess it's a rampart. Observation tower. Ron Renicky making a pitching change. Here comes John Axford. and softball programs. Our next stop is out in Westmoreland County, the Dairy Area Youth Athletic Association was organized in 2004 and now includes over 200 kids playing both softball and baseball. The Rural League includes boys and girls from several communities including Dairy, Blairsville, Latrobe, and Greensburg. We will continue our look at youth baseball and softball programs throughout the rest of this game. Tim, you're up, buddy. All right. Thank you very much, Dan. Appreciate it. These guys who are flashing the Z probably are in one league or another. Got their gloves. Yeah, they want to run. Well, the Pirates have the time run on board with two men out. Clint Barmas will now face John Axford, the former closer. Barmas is one for two with a double. You know with Axford you're going to see a fastball. He started him off with an off-speed pitch. Ken oh. Harrison. That's on the end duck isn't it? That's him. Oh, one pitch coming. Quickly, all in two. Josh Harrison. Uh, I bring that up because the only lefty on the, the bench is Travis Snyder, and he's kind of questionable. And I'm wondering if the questionable is that 
Maybe he can't go. There's no lefty throwing in the bullpen. He said he was available if needed. After and if that spot comes up, Friday. you would think the tying run is going to be in scoring position or already scored. But go ahead, runs in scoring position. Travis uh, found that ball off his back of his foot. Armis, little roller. Stay fair. Stay fair. It's going to go foul. Was that Anaheim we saw one the other day that that got on the edge of the actually was on the dirt yeah. and was trying to roll back up into the grass. Never ever saw one do that. And this one looked like it was uh, maybe going to set on that chalk line for a second. But too much momentum going into foul territory. Barmus. Has faced Axford five times in his career. He's four for five against him. Probably some too many people that can say that about uh, hitting Axford. So excellent numbers. One and two trying to induce Chase for the pitch up and in. Yeah, two of those four home runs. Use one of those now. Right now sure. would be a good time. McHenry hit by a pitch at first base. One two coming to Barmus. He's got a piece. Texas still leading Cincinnati in the eight three nothing and Oakland has taken a one run lead over St. Louis six to five they're in the fifth. For its one two. Struck out Barmus. Pirates leave another base runner. So we're through seven, one nothing Milwaukee. More Little League memories coming up when we come back to PNC Park. Grandma watching. I think it's the first time she saw me play. But yeah, that was fun. I mean, they were, I don't know, from here to the door, maybe they weren't very far, but they were home runs, so it worked. Uh, but that, that was pretty fun. Might be my only memory from Little League, but. <laughs> Justin Wilson with the Youth Baseball League memory. 1 0 Brewers leading the Pirates. Not much offense either way today. Just four hits combined. Wilson on the pitch. Face the bottom part of the Milwaukee order to start the eighth inning. Got to keep him right there. Justin Wilson has been doing that most of the season. Ben Mazzaro went five innings. 
Could he have done more? I mean, it's just fabulous. He was five awesome. great innings. Five, one, two, three innings, retired 15 straight. Last Pirate pitcher to go at least five innings of relief. Daniel McCutcheon, on July 26, 2011, at Atlanta in a 19 inning game that didn't end too favorably. Ben Mazzaro, tip of the cap to him for his work here today. Martin Maldonado swings and misses, and it's quickly 0 and 2. Maldonado's one for two, singled in the second inning, and then lined out to Andrew McCutcheon in center field in the fifth. Oh, two pitch. In the dirt. Now the Brewers have lost 24 games on the road. They're 13 and 24 away from Miller Park. At least for now, it looks like things have turned around in this divisional matchup. Where the Brewers had the upper hand for quite a while. And Pirates seem to. This one is inside. First base back. And Maldonado rumbling for second base. Jones guns it there. And he's safe. Martin Maldonado legs out a double. Yeah, nice uh, throw by Jonesy. He has to play that uh, a tough care. I mean, comes off the fence. Makes the bare hand. That one hopper almost right on the back. Farm was trying to get that tag in there as quick as he could. Just a tad late. I mean, boy, was that close. Logan Schaefer trying to bunt a man over to third base. McHenry's throw blocked by Parmas. Good job by Barmas just. Keeping that ball from going into the outfield and making sure that Maldonado stays at second base. Logan Schaefer might have something in his eye. This game with that big catch he made. Right out in front of the plate. Runner can't move up. And Walker with a great play to save a bad throw. And making things uh, ugly. And they stay just how they were, except now there's one out. That was a, a, a nice break uh, that the Pirates got with Schaefer just leaving this ball essentially right on top of home plate. So nobody could do anything. and. Walker saved the day with an excellent catch. All for a moment looked like it might go down into the corner. That would have been a disaster. Barely got his toe back on the back. Job, Neil. Unproductive out. As, uh, Maldonado goes nowhere. So Jonathan Lucroy back up catcher today. He will pinch hit. 333 as a pinch hitter in his career. 269 is average on the season. Eight home runs and 42 runs batted in. Normally the starting catcher. Lucroy. Facing Wilson. Pitch inside. He has a little insurance on the bases. Runner at second base, Martin Maldonado after a leadoff double. Had a leadoff triple from Carlos Gomez 
in the game last night were unable to get him in. Ground ball to Barmich. Plays the short hop. Fires to first. Two down. Let's look at the Nissan road ahead. Another day off for the Pirates tomorrow and Tuesday. The Phillies come to town. Game one of the series. It'll be rookie Jonathan Pettibone going for Philadelphia. Had a strong start to his career, but is 0-3 in his last six starts. For the Pirates, it'll be Jeff Locke, who in his last 13 starts is 6-0 with a 145 earn run average. He's 7-1 overall. Jeff Locke, who had a terrific Little League memory, going for the Mount Washington Little League in his home in Conway. How about this in 1999 Bob he pitched a perfect game. Mount Washington Valley Little League. His team won five nothing. He struck out 14 of the 18 batters he faced and he hit two home runs. Driving in all five of his team's run that runs that day. That's winning a game. It's Lloyd McClendon. Huh? It's legendary. Legendary Lloyd's. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ioki with a wild swing and it's 0 and 2. Justin Wilson gets ahead of the Milwaukee right fielder. And down the short. Farmers one hands, fires, got it. And the Brewers squander a leadoff double. For the bottom of the eight, Pirates looking for at least one run. Youth baseball and softball programs. Our next stop is the Ross Faber Youth Baseball League, which has been serving kids in the Bell Vernon and Manesson area for over 50 years. This year, there were over 250 kids ranging in age from 5 to 18 playing in their organization from T ball all the way through American Legion. Guys, you've kind of hit a wide area throughout Western PA this afternoon, and actually, not to be forgotten, the team that we profiled early on from Accident Maryland, the Pirates. That's right, the Accident. Maryland Pirates are here. Well, it's a one nothing game. What about you, Danny? If, you know, what, do you have any Little League memories? Is there any, is there any documentation? Uh, not really. I was more of a football guy, but I did play. I did play four years of Little League baseball. You did. You got four years in. Four years in, out in California. All right. I Travis Snyder is going to pinch hit to start the bottom of the eighth inning. Oh Here's man. Dan Potash. Yeah, I. Uh, I will say Beverly Hills Little League, which actually has a pretty good alumni in Jim Palmer. Well, first ball swinging is Snyder. Schaefer calls off Segura. One pitch, one down, and the Pirates half of the eighth. Was that the uh, most popular hairstyle back then in uh, Beverly Hills? Now it was for me, dude. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can go across the country. Robbie Smikowski who's off this weekend. We're up in the Philadelphia area. I understand he's got a rather flattering little league photo. Don't we all? <laughs> yeah. That was that was look that was uh, I want to say that was 1980 or 81. That was 10 or 11 in that picture. Let's check out Robbie's photo. Oh, nice. Must have, must have played in the fall league. It's all, it's all good except for the Philly hat. He's got the old uh, striped uni. One zero pitch to Starling Marte. It's in for a strike. Jim Henderson is taken over for Axford. Axford went the inning, striking out two, hitting a man. Getting down to the nitty gritty now. I got to do something here soon. Getting concerned. Correction: Axford just went a third of the inning, striking out a man. There are Henderson's numbers. Pitched a scoreless eighth inning last night with a strikeout. Came off the disabled list for Milwaukee on the 8th of June. He had a strained right hamstring. And that was uh, against the Pirates. He injured himself in. But, uh, ball took something out down there. I think that might be the second time today we've uh, had the. Uh, the crowd might take a hit. That's twice now that's happened today. That's where it was. We do not have that microphone available anymore. It happens occasionally. All right, say hot shot down to Sigo. Oh, that's out of the left center field. And the Pirates with a base runner. Tying run aboard in the eighth. Now keep hitting the ball hard. Something good's got to happen. Finally, it did. Yeah, I mean, they've been centering up the baseball so many times today and can't get the ball in a hole. And this time it's still not in a hole. It's the girl unable to make the play as it just ate him up. And a score to base hit. Well, Segura's had a tough series defensively. Especially Friday night. That one hit right at him. He couldn't corral it. That have caught part of his bare hand. Neil Walker with a chance here. Starling Marte has 22 stolen bases. Certainly the Brewers concerned about him. Definitely uh, when he's on base one run ball game you, you, you better be concerned. Keep your eye on him. On a ball outside. And so if you're worried about it's a slow roller, Weeks will have one play. I was gonna say if you're a catcher and you're worried about getting something you could make a throw on, you see a lot of catchers call for fast ball away. And they don't want to have to deal with the hitter in any way trying to make a throw. Andrew McCutcheon with a time run in scoring position and two outs. 0 for 2, a chance to be clutch. A lot of Jolly Rogers here today. Seems that there are a lot of Jolly Rogers here every time the Pirates convene for a baseball game lately. 291. Just looking for his 10th homer. Henderson on the hill for the Brewers. Check second. Now the pitch. One and zero. Oh. Very careful with him uh, all day long. Not too anxious to lay one in there. You know, first pitch time way off the off the plate. Dave Nichols fixing the microphone. Good job, Dave. He's, he's down on the uh, the hazardous territory. Ball one strike to McCutcheon. That's 
just got out ahead and uh, went after a, a pitch I think he, he thought was it going to be a little more inside than it ended up. He likes the ball in inside half of the plate. Marte off second base. Here's the one one from Henderson. Two and one. Good eye. That was awfully close. Hard breaking ball. Seventh inning or later, a 322 average. Three home runs, eight runs batted in. Two one coming. Base hit. Here comes Marte around third. And they're not going to get him. Down to second base, McCutcheon, and he is out. But the Pirates tie the game at one. McCutcheon gets him in. And it's a new ball game as Starling Marte uses his wheels to score. to one. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Lite. Well, unfortunate for Andrew McCutcheon. Fortunate in one way gets an RBI base hit. Unfortunate that runs himself into the final out of the inning. And he would have represented the go ahead run with two outs on base. But the game will get extended here. Brian Morris comes on to pitch following up Justin Wilson. Two three and four Segura Gomez and Francisco do up for the Brewers. There's a, uh, a win out here for somebody. Happy Bryant's Let's put a zero up. Brian Morris in a pretty good spot right here. He's got to get Two, three, and four out. Yeah, he's got the uh, middle of the lineup coming up. But if he can put up a zero, then one run and he gets a W. More importantly, Pirates get number 51. So Morris to face Gene Segura. Segura is 0 for 3. The pitch. It's another foul. Strike one. Morris gets ahead. Segura has grounded out three times. Once to second, once to short, and once back to Vin Mazzaro, who was pitching in the sixth inning. I think when you look at stories for this ballgame, Vin Mazzaro, a rather large part of this story, went 
five innings of relief after the rain delay and retired all 15 batters he faced. Walker diving stop to first base. Segura, Segura, he's got twice today. First inning, same, same play. Walker got him, bang, bang. In fact, it looked like maybe Segura was safe. And now Segura again, bang, bang play. He immediately reacted. He is hot. Great, great play by that guy. Well, we have seen him, Bob, become so good at going to his right. Segura in the face of umpire Tim McClellan Ron Renneke came out to argue. Oh, bang bang at first it goes the Pirates way. Oh, Segura lucky he didn't get tossed immediately he jumped right up. And, uh, started. Getting into the personal space. McClellan. Well, maybe he had a point. Pirates got the call. 1 0 pitch. And Gomez, a bouncer, charging his Barmas. Two gone. I said earlier in the ball game, or in the first inning, when, when uh, Charlie Morton's out there, it, infield's got to really do a great job. We're going to take a look at that play again. I think he was out. First one, I, first inning, I thought he was safe. This one, I thought he was out. It was that diving stop by Walker again? But uh, Morris, he gets a ton of ground balls also. Definitely a ground ball pitcher. Got to play good infield defense behind Brian. And that play by Walker is categorized as very good defense. Uh, two outs, bases empty. Juan Francisco at the plate. Strike one to Francisco. We've talked about, you know, times for uh, a guy with a huge shift, no third baseman when you could bunt. Now is not the time. Francisco swinging the bat. This is. Oh, one pitch. There's strike two. Morris ahead of the count. Nothing in two to Juan Francisco, the cleanup man for Milwaukee. Through the top of the ninth for Brian Morris. Pirates one, Milwaukee one. To the bottom of the ninth we go at PNC Park. One one Pirates and Brewers Josh Harrison a right handed batter is going to pinch hit against a new pitcher for the Brewers fans want a walk off look at the Jolly Rogers. And 
Michael Gonzalez will come on to pitch for Milwaukee. Well, Harrison is going to pinch it. And it'll be Pedro Alvarez and Gabby Sanchez. You know, I think that they should add an extension a little add on part to the sign store for flags. Really? That could be uh, in the back? Uh, just Come off to the side. An annex. Good business opportunity, yeah, Bob. I think that. Next time I'm at the sign store, I'm going to mention that. It's a good idea. A little addition for flags. Josh Harrison trying to get on and become the winning run. He will take a strike from. Gonzalez. Well, one pitch coming. And that's outside. One ball, one strike. The right handers hitting 212. Lefties hitting them better at 259. One and two to Harrison. We called Friday from Triple A Indianapolis. Hit 316 in 60 games there. His last 10 Triple A games was hitting 391. One two pitch in the dirt. This is his fourth time with the Pirates this season. Has been boomerang back and forth between Triple A and the big leagues. Count us full three and two. Very good job this year using the Triple A team as just an extension of the roster. So that just a, another set of players that they can go to at any time, especially with the bullpen. We've seen it. You know, bring somebody up for a few games. Back down. We saw it with Tony Sanchez. Came up for a couple of DH appearances when we were playing uh, over the American Lake Towns. I think the railing got the better of the parrot. Fell off his perch. <laughs> he says he's safe. I would argue with him. I think he's going to bend the beak here. That is a foul ball. Harrison to right center. Gomez glides under it, makes the catch. One gone for the Pirates. Pedro coming up. Can he? I hope he can. Don't think about it, Pedro. See the ball hits the ball. He's 0 for three. Nothing complicated. Keep it simple. El Toro is. So Supposed to be red, though. Isn't it? Yeah, it should be red, but you can't miss that color green. <laughs> Twelve-game hitting streak on the line, too, for Alvarez. Career long for him. August seventh, two thousand ten. He hit a three-run home run that. Just made PNC Park absolutely erupt that night. He was behind Gonzalez, nothing in two. Remember in that ball game, Todd Helton put the Rockies ahead in the top of the tenth inning with a home run. There he goes. Three runner over the right field wall, one. 0 2 pitch. One and two. Month Pedro hitting 319, 10 home runs. He has driven in 24 of his 53 runs here in June. One two pitch from Gonzalez. Count is even. Andrew McCutcheon, an RBI single scoring Marte. In the bottom of the eighth to tie the game at one. Here comes the 2 2 from Michael Gonzalez. 
Popped him up. Long run for Betancourt. That ball is going to make the seats. Kept on twisting. Betancourt jumping up on the tarp. He's getting himself in position to try and make a fabulous catch. Watch him. This is where the, the ball is going to go, and he's going to go after it. Can't make a fabulous catch if you never look back up. So that slowed down on the AGH. If camp. you're not going to look at the sky, don't jump up on the tarp. Two two to Pedro. Popped up. This one looks like it'll stay in play for Betancourt. Two out for the Pirates in the bottom of the ninth. Betancourt makes the catch that time. See, he was looking up. He knew he. Make that play. So Gabby Sanchez. He was robbed. He was definitely robbed. Maybe he can go get one back. Seventh inning, Logan Schaefer leaping over and pulling it back. Ball one to Gabby. He was 0 for 3. That's outside 2 and 0. Two balls, no strikes to the Pirates first baseman Gabby Sanchez. Shadow is now touching the mound, so from the point of release to the plate, it's all in the shadows. Oh, 3 0. Green line here, three and zero. If he gets one right where he thinks he can hit it out of the ballpark, and he walked it, so the winning runs aboard for the Pirates. And it'll be up to the fort to get him in. Michael McKinley is 0 for two, hit by a pitch. A lot of green grass out there. I think Brewers outfielder is playing deep. Just dipped under 200 today. Started at 202, now down to 198. Three home runs on the season for the fort. And he looks at strike one. Third baseman guarding the line at third. Segura deep at short. One and one the count. The Brewers right now in their defensive alignment would concede the base hit. They're trying to prevent against the double. To center field and down for a hit. And now with two outs, the Pirates have the winning run in scoring position. And Clint Barmas is going to get called back to the dugout. Gonzalez realizing they sit by McHenry. See McHenry hitting that ball out of the center field. Didn't hit it all that hard, got it in for the the label a little bit. The outfield very deep. They had to play against no doubles with the winning run at second base. Uh, a different situation. Let's say two outs. Uh, you know, nobody on. Uh, nobody out. Nobody on. Early in the ball game. Gomez might be in a position to catch that ball, but not. Not the situation he had. In fact, like like right now, Gomez is going to be in. Fairly shallow in center field. 
He wants to have a shot at home plate if there's another base hit by Mercer. If you're thinking about a pinch runner, Harrison's been used, and Snyder, that would have been your best bet. Inge is still available. Russell Martin is available. Jordy Mercer at the plate. Just a note on uh, Vin Mazarabop, real quick. He's the first pitcher in Major League Baseball to pitch five or more perfect innings in relief since Carlos Villanueva, then of Milwaukee, did it in 06 on September 15th. A big part of that story was Mazzaro's effort today. Mercer looking for a base hit. Trying to drive home Gabby Sanchez and win the ball game. We need a hero. All the hard hit balls today we've had for outs. Could it end on a blooper? Strikes. The pitch. Two and zero. Oh. Bobby Sanchez representing the winning run this afternoon. Bucks trailed one nothing until the bottom of the eighth. And it's three and zero. Oh. In the number nine spot on deck is Brandon Inge. Looked like it. Just caught the bottom of the strike zone. Call went Mercer's way. And that's ball four, and the bases are full of bucks. Second walk of the inning for Gonzalez. And that, of course, uh, pushes Gabby over to third base, and now you don't have to worry about the. Uh, the, the speed deal of Gabby maybe getting thrown out at the plate if it was a hard hit base hit. Uh, Brandon Andrew would like a repeat performance of what he did after being called up following his stint on the DL to start the season. It was in Milwaukee, May 1st, at the game winning RBI off John Axford in the eighth inning. The weeks kicked it away, and uh, James McDonald came in to score. Take the third was Inch. Should go on to win that ball game. So the base is full, two outs, bottom of the ninth. And Inch takes a strike. Oh, back to a the ball for strike one. Gonzalo needed to, needed to do that. He wanted to get out ahead so that he's got a little wiggle room to work on Inch. Oh, one pitch. That's in the dirt. You fall behind in the count. Base is loaded. Last inning. In a tie ball game, and that there's not a whole lot that you can do. You, you got to go with the hitter. You can't try and get him to swing at your pitch. That's why that strike one is very important. You started Tuesday night in Seattle and went two for three. Maldonado saved the game for the Brewers right there. Yeah, that one definitely high enough to make the uh, the screen back there. Sometimes they hit the stones, the ball will bounce back. That would have hit the net and it just died. Maldonado would have had to run all the way to the backstop to retrieve that. Gabby would have scored easily. Brandon Inge, career with the bases loaded, hitting 321. 2 1 pitch. And now it's 2 and 2. Nail biting time at PNC Park. Pedro can't even watch. Charlie Morton started this game. A rain delay knocked him out. And there is Gabby Sanchez. Two ball, two strike pitch. And the count is four. The ball game riding on the very next pitch. And now they all the infielders they like just lost their foresight. Everybody will be moving now. 
Start the merry-go-round for Brandon Inch. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. The payoff pitch. Oh, cue it up and do it over again. Two strikes. Struck him out. Pirates leave the bases loaded in the bottom of the ninth. And we're headed for extra innings on the North Shore, all even at one. Jerky all season long. Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. Here we are in extra innings once again. Pirates and Brewers one to one is the score. He changes as Josh Harrison remains in the game playing right field. Jordy Mercer stays in playing shortstop. And the new pitcher is Jason Grilly. One, two, three inning last night. And the 27th save of the year. Now he's looking for a W. I saw a stat earlier today, Bob, on extra innings games. Been 47 of them. And uh, that's the most since. Went to 30 teams in 1998. Pirates Let's get a run, they can break those out. Bucks hoping to broom the Brewers. Ricky Weeks leads off at the top of the 10th and takes a strike. Well, the Pirates had an opportunity. Gonzalez walked two in the inning. They got a hit from McHenry. Bases were loaded. Brandon in struck out as a pinch hitter on a 3 2 pitch. Weeks now behind nothing in two. Pirates are five and four in extras. Milwaukee four and five. Popped him up, shallow right. Here comes Harrison. Going out in the Brewers half of the ten. <laughs> well, Pirates have nine extra inning games so far this season. Nine in the first 81. Seem like that's a lot. Seems like there's a lot of extra innings games uh, being played around baseball, but 
each team here and has nine apiece. One seems like a lot. And if yes. you're going to play extras, it's best to come away with a win. Yeah. Right? Right. Absolutely. Betancourt, ground ball toward short. Jordy Mercer puts on the first to get it. Couple of easy quick outs, pop up and a slow grounder. And quickly get us back to the bat rack. Martin Maldonado, two for three today. Brewers catcher singled in the second inning and he doubled in the eighth. This is game number 81, 81 to play in the regular season after this one. This game concludes, will be smack dab at the halfway point. Pirates with a day off tomorrow, and then the Phillies come in for three Tuesday and Wednesday night, and then Thursday afternoon, 1 35 on the 4th of July. Pirates spend next weekend in Chicago. Three game road trip against the Cubs. Oh, one pitch. And there's a base hit. Three hits today for Maldonado. Now all of them pretty much in that direction. Got the single that was uh, just a little bit fair, then the double that was barely fair, and now singles again that direction. Definitely going the right today. Logan Schaefer, the left fielder of the batter. Pitch up high for ball one. Two outs, one on. Schaefer with the uh, RBI today. Brewers were two for eight in the first two innings. Since then, two for 25. And Maldonado was the two of the 25. He got both of them. Brewers have four hits. The only other one belongs to Carlos Gomez, the center fielder. He got a base hit in the first inning. Logan Schaefer with an RBI. He bunted his way toward the First base side, but was out. Abby Sanchez able to field it. And he got a run in on that. One ball and two strikes to Schaefer. Uh, Brandon Kinsler and K Rod, Francisco Rodriguez. Rodriguez looks ready. Kinsler warming up. Kinsler appeared in last night's game. Ready for the one two. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Grayson really with a strikeout. Head to the bottom of the tenth. One one.
John from the AGH cam on a nice Sunday afternoon. Good day for a, a ride on a jet ski on the Allegheny River. 1-1 one, one the score. Bottom of the 10th inning. Long day at the yard. Jeff Bianchi comes in to play third base. Part of the double switch. Comes into the ninth spot. And in the sixth spot is the reliever Brandon Kinsler. This game began at 1.35 in the afternoon. A two hour and 20 minute rain delay. Pirates are at the plate with two outs in the second when the, when the rains came. Kessler's all given up one home run. Fairly impressive for 32 appearances. Pitching a lot of his ball games in Miller Park. Just one home run. Yeah, that's a, that's a low number. Get home runs in. You know, over the course of the season, he's going to give up more than, than that, you would think, wouldn't you? You would think. Kind of a, just seems awfully low. Just one home run, Tim. Maybe it's time for another. Wow, I didn't think of that. You didn't think of that? Yeah, I think that maybe you're right. Okay. Marte takes a strike. So, top of the order for the Pirates. Final scores from out west. The A's have beaten the Cardinals 7 to 5. And the Rangers have beaten the Reds. 3 2. So Pirates can pull this one off. It would be two games in front of the Cardinals in the division and five and a half in front of Cincinnati. That's where the Pirate win today. Marte ground ball to short. Segura makes the play. That was one out. And they shave a half game back. So this one's completed. So one and a half currently for St. Louis. Five for Cincinnati. Pirates get a run here. They'll make it two and five and a half and extend their lead in the division. Looking for their ninth straight win. They won eight in a row. Longest winning streak of the season. Neil Walker without a hit today. 0 for 3 with a walk. Still can't get used to looking at the standings with just five teams. It's just like there's something. Somebody odd about it. Yeah. Oh one. Side. One ball and one strike to Walker. One and one to Walker. Oh, Neil took a healthy cut and missed. Neil trying to. End it with one swing. Andrew McCutcheon on deck. Brandon Kessler, the right hander facing Neil Walker. One two pitch. And Walker strikes out. Two gone. Out here in the 10th, and it was the 12th inning here at PNC Park. As he hit this one off, Mike Fires back on the 14th of May, and that was a walk-off winner in extra innings for McCutcheon. He has been a nemesis for the Brewers. Takes a strike. Kutchin one for three with a run batted in. He drove in Marte in the bottom of the eighth inning to tie it at one. Oh, one pitch to McCutcheon. One and one. Make a mistake. Something on the inside half. Ooh. Not a good swing for Cutch no, there. He's behind one and two. Not a fool as uh, you can get. Cutch might have been guessing a little bit that one one pitch. Kinsler ahead of him. Balls, two strikes. Not giving him much to hit. Keeping away with those breaking balls. Since the beginning of last season, McCutcheon has hit 
more home runs against the Brewers than any other active player. He's got 10 of them. Two two pitch. It'll stay two and two. Let's see what Touch can do here in this next one. Everything away so far. Make that mistake. Two and two. Foul. Again, that third. pitch on the outside corner. Mark Melanson ready to go. Should we have an 11th inning? Two and two to Andrew McCutcheon. Brandon Kinsler. Facing him in the bottom of the tenth. Here's the pitch. Struck him out. So we'll head to the eleventh inning. Stay with us. It's a long day at PNC Park. by Jack Link's Beef Jerky all season long. Jack Link's Beef Jerky, feed your wild side. Well, a day game that's turning into a night game. We go to the 11th. One to one. Beware of the shark tank. And the sharks looking to get fed. But They're hungry. They, they ate them. their sign. Don't feed them. That sign was uh, brought back by Mark Melanson. He found that while shopping on the day off in Seattle. Lanson now to pitch the 11th inning. I was looking at the real sharks they have in the clubhouse today. Look, Mark, they're talking about the sharks, and they finally named it the sharks. Kent Sokolby will be happy to know one is named Teak. Good. And the other, one of Melanson's best pitches, Cutter. Oh, Teak and Cutter. I like the way it goes together. Those are the names of the sharks, the live ones they've got in the Pirates clubhouse. Uh, is there a third fish in there? That well, there's a couple of other fish. There's a lionfish, and then there's uh, no names. Huh? They haven't named them yet. They're working on it. Jeff Bianchi leading off. Came in as part of the double switch, batting in the nine spot. Third baseman now for Milwaukee. And Melanson winds and fires. Wow, tip for a strike. Sixty one for Bianchi, six RBIs, no homers. Right back to Melanson. One out. Back to the top of the order. Norich Gaioki. He's 0 for 4 today. Come to the plate. 
A oh, long day for the youngster. I want to wake him up, dude. I feel right there. Like headset on. So you feel the headset on? <laughs> like someone's got their hands yeah. over your ears? One and to Aoki. And is grounded out twice and flied out twice. Two balls in those strikes. Two all is fouled off down the third base side. Tries to hit a lot of balls down that line. He? he does. He loves to go to left field. It's almost like not even left foot. He likes to go like. It's like he's targeted the foul line. He doesn't want it any more than about five feet fair at most. That's his aiming point. We're trying to pull that one. Maybe he was trying for the other line. Yeah, I think that's. You know, some guys go from line to line. He basically is just line or the other line. Two strikes on Aoki. Lanson's pitch. And that's a foul ball down him. You know, his foot or part of the leg before he left. And you heard David Rackley, the home plate umpire, calling it foul right away. He kind of swings and runs at the same time. Oh, it came up and hit him in the stomach. Yeah. The umpire has to make the call right away. And he called him in foul territory. Two balls, two strikes. And the pitch. On the third. Pedro with a good throw. Two away. Aoki's 0 for 5. Now the Brewers shortstop, Gene Segura, facing Melanson with two down in the 11th. Segura has grounded out four times today. Leading the National League and hits with 105. But he's still at 105. He's got any calls at first base today, but he got a call there. Huh? Looked like a perfect little cutter. And that one definitely off the plate. 2 0 the count to Segura. Third and batting average in the National League to start the day today. Now he finds himself behind Melanson 3 0. So top three in batting average, top in hits. Number two in triples with eight. And he will take a strike there. So there are also in the top. Three in multi hit games with 30. No hits today. Lanson trying to come back. Three ball, one strike pitch. And a tapper toward Walker. Walker. Got him. And Segura's 0 for 5. Pirates trying to walk it off in the bottom of the 11.
is that right after this half inning. Whatever that might be. 1-1 one, one, Brewers and Pirates bottom of the 11th inning. 7-0-1. The start of this game at 1:35. Two hour and 20 minute rain delay mixed in. So we hope you're enjoying dinner with us now. The Pirates bat in the bottom of the 11th inning. Josh Harrison will lead off. His second at bat. He pinch hit in the eighth inning. I beg your pardon, in the ninth inning for Garrett Jones. He fly to center field. The ball one strike. Well, you think back to May 13th last season, it was Mother's Day. Josh Harrison had the Mother's Day miracle, walk off hit in the twelfth inning against Houston. Toward the middle, backhanded by Weeks. One gone. Pedro Alvarez didn't know he'd get another chance today. He's 0 for 4. 12 game hitting streak still in the line. He's definitely uh, you know, the type of guy you want to see come up in these situations. So one swing easily in this ball game. Long home run yesterday. One hopped into the river. It was a foul for strike one. Pedro has struck out twice today. Rounded out, popped out foul to the third baseman. One ball has come close to leaving the yard today. That was off the bat of Gabby Sanchez in the seventh inning. He was robbed of a home run when Logan Schaefer reached up over the wall and took it away. Two and one to Pedro. Brandon Kinsler waiting for the sign from Maldonado. Two two pitch. Pedro rolls it to the right side. And we're going to play twelve. Well, that's only two out. Maybe not. Hopefully we don't play 12. Pedro tried to go out and pull the ball a little too far away. There's that home run ball that wasn't. Schaefer great timing on that leap. A very athletic play. Look how he got that hand out to brace himself right along the top of the wall. Gabby, a ground ball. Segura. And we will play 12. 1, 2, 3, go the Pirates in the 11th. On to the 12th at PNC Park. Time for bed.
Twins avenge their 2008 Finals loss with a victory over the Red Wings in Game 7 of the 2009 Stanley Cup Finals. Here from Sidney Crosby, Max Talbot, Bill Guerin, Craig Adams, and Chris Kunitz while you relive the Pens hoisting their third Stanley Cup. Sunday Night Classics. Pens return to glory tonight in its entirety following Pirates postgame. And Dad will be able to see it, but I think uh, the son is going to be counting sheep. He is out. Well, certainly a long day at the ballpark. Sharks have done their job. Top of the 12th, a 1 1 game. The Sharks giving up two hits. Right? Tony Watson facing Carlos Gomez. Gomez first ball swing. Gabby Sanchez has a play. One pitch, one out. Numbers for Tony Watson. And will now face Juan Francisco. There's a ball low. Pirates have one pitcher down there left. After Tony, it's Ryan Reed. Let's hope we don't get there. Not that I don't think Ryan will do a good job. It's just that I want to see this offense come alive and then have a big walk off moment. Reward the fans that have been here this whole time. That would be a lot of fun. 1 1 to Francisco from Watson. Swing and a miss. I don't think you ever want to get to that last guy. Anyway, is it. Uh, Really put you in a bind if something was to happen to him. Who do you throw then? Jordy Mercer is the guy. He's your emergency pitcher. One two. Just off the corner. Two and two. Jordy was a pitcher in college at Oklahoma State. I don't know what possessed me to do it, but uh, maybe a week or so ago, I just asked Clint out of the blue one day. He said, "What happens if you get in trouble? Which position player do you throw?" I said, Jordy. Struck him out. Watson strikes out Francisco. Get low in the tank. Ryan Reed had some extended work on Friday. Got his first save. Yeah, three inning save. And the Pirates 10 3 win. Well, Jeff Locke, tomorrow's. But not tomorrow, but Tuesday starting pitcher is out there just in case. Emergency situation. That's the guy. He reached Chuck Swing Roller. Not uncommon in a situation like this to see the next game's starting pitcher have to be the next guy to go. Also saw Jared Hughes out there. Hughes on the disabled list. Strike two in weeks. No balls and two strikes. Tony Watson trying to get Ricky Weeks here. Inside for ball one and two. The Brewers have sent out Aramis Ramirez in the on deck circle. And he would pinch hit in the pitcher's spot due to the double switch, is now the sixth spot in the order.
Ready for the one two is weeks. Here it is. Still one and two. Pitcher's spot for the Pirates due up third in the bottom of the 12th. One position player remains, and that's your backup catcher, Russell Martin. One and two. That's up by two and two. Weeks, two balls, two strikes. Weeks has struck out once. Flying out three times. Twice. Oh, struck out twice. Tony Watson gets him in order, punching out two. Going to the bottom of the 12th inning. All even at one. Tour of baseball and softball programs takes us up to McCandless Athletic Association, which is one of the larger baseball and softball leagues in the area. There are 535 kids in the MCAA, ranging in ages from 4 to 18, who play most of their games at the Vincentian Academy Complex in the North Hills. And maybe even some of them are in attendance this afternoon, which is, of course, now tonight, guys. That's right. Well, good to see you're still here, Dan. Oh, yeah. Where am I going to go? <laughs> well,. It is now a night game. The lights are on. 1-1, one, one, bottom of the 12. The Pirates have only gone one game longer than 12 this year. They beat the Reds in 13. So Kinsler starts his third inning of work facing Michael McHenry. McHenry, Mercer, and then the pitcher's spot. One oh pitch. Fouled off one and one. Michael McHenry had a base hit in the ninth inning. Gabby Sanchez on in front of him. Jordy Mercer walked behind him. Loaded up the bases. Pirates couldn't get a run in. Strike called one and two. Crowd of better than 35,000 on hand today. Many of them have stayed. If you're a fan of pitching, today's your day. Long game and no offense. Five hits for the Pirates, four hits for Milwaukee. They've all been spread out. And three of the four hits for Milwaukee off the bat of Martin Maldonado. One, two. McHenry down the right field. Oh, 
sliced out of play. Well, that would have been a nice uh, way to get things rolling here. A double. Why not? Put up a can of worms for the Brewers. Ball and two strikes to Michael. One two. To center field. Going back Gomez. Holds it in for the out. One out in the bottom of the 12th inning. Pirates post game coming up at the end of this one. Rob King will be on the desk along with Kent to Colby. Big late kick already for T. There they are, waiting patiently. They're in their new uniforms. <laughs> Been a long wait today. Mercer takes ball one. I'll get day off tomorrow anyway. Starting to get hungry. Oh, I have some jerky over here. Oh, really? Nip one some Jack Lynch. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Two balls and no strikes to Jordy Mercer. Look at his little league photo. Looks like he was a Dodger, huh? Two zero pitch. Right in there, two and one. Jordy hitting three twenty four over his last eighteen games. To the right side, Ricky Weeks. And there are two gone in the twelfth. And Tony Watson's going to have to hit for himself. Routine stuff going on. Who wants to win this game? Watson is 0 for 2 at the plate in his major league career. Now he's 0 and 1 at the plate. Yeah, that's his count. <laughs> Go for two, no one. A little low. Not much though. Pretty close pitch. One and one. The count to Tony Watson. A good cut. Followed it off. One and two. Out there and throw some more. If he doesn't hit one out. <laughs> one two pitch. And he does hit one down the left field side, but goes foul. Broke his bat, too. Well, Marte on deck. Hey, years ago, talking about you know, hitting one out, have to go back out and pitch, that sort of thing. I was with the Braves. We had a uh, pitcher named Tommy Boggs, who was uh, one of those uh, pitchers could really hit. And he was warming up to come into an extra inning ball game like this. Two strike three call. I'd have to hold that story. I'll finish it up. So we're going to inning number 13 on this Sunday evening now at PNC Park.
Parrott is out. And he's out even more with the AGH camp slowing it down. Along with Dan Potash and Bob Walk, Tim Neverett. 1 1, top of the 13th inning. Tony Watson stays on the pitch and he will face a pinch hitter, Aramis Ramirez. And then Martin Maldonado and Logan Schaefer, 6 7 8, do up for the Brewers. Nobody wants to run too badly this afternoon. We have seen a ton of routine outs, a lot of atom balls. So the second time this year, the Pirates have gone to a 13 inning game. Strike one to Ramirez. That was pretty good. Hit the fort took on the mask. Not even phased. Oh. That one got up on the, like the forehead part of the mask. I, I wonder if there's a you know, part where you can get hit where it bothers you more than others. And two to Ramirez. Tony Watson struck out the last two men he faced in the 12th. Up on the forehead. That's where like the real thick padding is up there. Plus you have the padding in your helmet. That might be the best place if you're going to get hit up there. So you're probably getting hit in there. Jaw area. That'd be the worst. Yeah, I agree. Popped up on the infield. Pedro Alvarez calling for it. And the pitcher's mound. Pedro makes the catch, and Ramirez is gone. That was one out. So this is the longest home game this season. Pirates haven't won an extra inning game after the 12th since. The 8th of April in 2011 against Colorado when they beat them in 14 innings. At home. Oh. Yeah, we won one, a long one, didn't we? In On the right. Louis. Last there was a 19 inning game there. There was a 13 inning game at Cincinnati this year. Well, that's right. That's right. That's right. So it's the second 13 inning affair. Now, Maldonado. Three for four today. And the uh, seven thirty. I believe the rest of the lineup is one for thirty-eight. <laughs> Bad day at the office. One for thirty-eight. And considering Maldonado is a one ninety-one hitter, backed him up. He keeps getting those base hits to right. One right over the back. One about ten feet in fair territory. One. First, or was that the second inning? I think when uh, Gabby was holding on a runner, and then he had another ground ball through that second base hole. His last at bat. Go right there again. Two strikes, one out. Base is empty. Top half of the 13th inning. Strike three. Watson has struck out three over his two and two thirds innings of work. He'll now face the left fielder Logan Schaefer. A slider down and in. A great shot of the grip is. Came off the side of the baseball, puts that side spin on it. The ball comes in and moves down and in on the hitter. It all looks so simple when you slow it down like that. Left on left matchup. Big cut of the miss. Schaefer without a hit today. Go for four. Does have a run batted in. Got to go back to the second inning. Sometime earlier this afternoon, when the Brewers put a run up, they have been shut down since. Pirates got a run in the bottom of the eighth inning to tie it. And chase there, and that's strike two. Watson doing a good job out of the pen. Vin Mazzaro, five innings of perfect relief, retiring all 15 Brewers he faced. 
not forget about Vin today and the effort he put out. Oh, two to Schaefer. Struck him out on three pitches. Tony Watson with four strikeouts over two innings. Let's go to the bottom of the 13th. He knows what end to look into. So does Troy. He's been up there on top of Mount Troy all afternoon. Chad, good job, Chad. Thanks for hanging in there today. And of course, there's Billy Morello. Joe, thanks. Late for dinner. That's what we're going to call you. 1 1. The Pirates and the Brewers go to the bottom of the 13th inning. There's Maul in the AGH camp. Maul slowing it down for everybody today. And we thank that unmanned camera right there. Thank you. They're acknowledging it. Dale is uh, shaking it. It's in the Down to the robo room. There's Terry with the roaming camera. Potash and Dave Nichols, of course, handling audio. So our crew working overtime today is are the Pirates and Brewers. Bottom of the 13th inning. Payrod delivers ball one to Starling Marte. Marte had a base hit in the eighth and scored. The lone Pirates run was driven in with two outs by Andrew McCutcheon. Maybe extra bases. He is looking for two. And Starling Marte slides in safe. A leadoff double for Marte. Doesn't take much, does it, to get him an extra 90 feet. A line drive right back. And the ball. It, Close to a stop out there. Gets barehanded. Man. How many guys is this just a single? Okay, nice turn coming around first base. Gets in there. Pop up slide. Beautiful thing. Lead off double. The can of worms is open. 28 multi hit games on the season now for Marte. Walker at the plate. Neal takes a strike. Neal needs to pull this ball now. Got to pull it. If you don't get the base hit, at least you move Marte to third. Marte, the winning run in scoring position. Nobody out. Rodriguez 0-1. Breaking ball, caught part of the plate. Walk 
Walker behind, nothing in two. He's gonna break the ball just sat right on the inside corner. Going out a hit today. 0 for 4. By feet that time. Talk a lot about how they, pitchers don't necessarily have pinpoint control where, you know, they can hit, hit a small area. That pitch was supposed to be upstairs, saw where the target was given, and was way off the place inside about thigh high. Facing Francisco Rodriguez. Rodriguez last outing was Thursday against the Cubs. 13 of Marte's last 18 hits have gone for extra bases. Six doubles, five triples. Nice. One, two coming to Walker. Neil pops this one up. The Yankee going out. Schaefer coming in. It drops into no man's land. Thank you. How about that? Walker catching a break. Well, the only thing that could have happened good there was maybe a diving catch. And then Marte perhaps could have tagged and went to third. Andrew McCutcheon on deck. He played the tying run in the bottom of the eighth with an RBI single scoring Marte. Nobody out bottom of the 13th inning. There's the one two pitch. Walker to the right side got the job done. Excellent. Weeks throws him out. Good piece of situational hitting by Walker. And the winning run 90 feet away with one out. Yeah, definitely a a battle to get it over there, but he got it over there. In fact, this pitch was up and away. Watch the location. He was able to hook it to that side of the field and move Marte over. And now we'll see what they're going to decide to do with McCutcheon. Looks like they're going to walk him. See the ground ball that moved the runner. Put McCutcheon on. The Brewers not concerned about McCutcheon's run. It's the one at third they're most concerned with. Josh uh, Harrison will hit next. It'll be interesting to me to see how they play it. I'm assuming they're going to be back for a double play. So that uh, is another, another reason to try and uh, sidestep McCutcheon. Set up two. Now you don't have to. Bring the infield in on the grass. There's the fourth wide one. And McCutcheon will go down to first base. Runners at the corners now with one out. Maldonado will go talk to Rodriguez. And the Marte has to be alert for everything. There's the guy you want on there because if there's a pass ball, wild pitch, something like that. He's got as good a chance to score as anybody in the ballpark. Nick Sofield, third base coach. Giving him the instructions. So now Ron Renicky is coming out. And I think they're, gonna, they're gonna they're gonna play uh, an extra infielder, it looks to me. Yeah, Carlos Gomez. Is coming in from center field. So it looks like the Brewers are going to go with two outfielders and five infielders. I'm assuming they'll play Gomez right over the second base back. Mm -hmm. 
This is something you just don't see. We see some rare things from time to time. This is something you've seen some college teams do. But they're going to bring the infield in with five infielders. Not going to look for that double play. Josh Harrison. Anything over their heads. Going to win the ball game. There goes McCutcheon for second. Harrison showed bunt. Pulled it back and took the ball 1 and 0. I can remember uh, Joe Orslack in a similar situation hitting a ground ball up the middle. We thought we had won the ball game. And there was the center fielder caught the ball, stepped on the back, threw out Joe, and inning over. That's the uh, one of the only other times I can remember a center fielder coming in. Shows punt again. Takes ball two. And now Harrison will go down and visit with Rick Sofield. Certainly you gotta make sure you got it right. Now remember, Josh has been up and down four times between Triple A. Sofield has been substituting at third for Nick Leva, who's been a little ill lately. And, and so they want to make sure these signs are exactly right. The communication's got to be right with the ball game on the line in the bottom of the 13th inning. Yeah, I agree. I agree. This is not the time to have somebody, you know, not see a sign or think they see something that they don't. 2 0 pitch. Harrison swings and pulls it foul. The best way to get a ball to the outfield is to go the other direction. You don't want to pull. When you pull, you have a tendency to roll your wrist and hit the ball on the ground. Now, obviously, not all the time. You can hit a fly ball to the left, but if you're trying to get the ball to the outfield, you want to think back through the middle or towards toward the opposite, which is right here with Harrison at the plate. Two strikes now for Josh Harrison. Five infielders in on the grass. Charlie Morton started this game, went two innings, and then the rains came. Two hour and 20 minute delay. Charlie couldn't come back. A long time since he warmed up. Beginning of this ball game. Ball game in the balance here with Marte at third, McCutcheon at second. Two ball, two strike pitch. Now it's three and two. See Josh really eyeballing that one as it went by. Able to say no thanks. Payoff pitch from Rodriguez. And Harrison fouls it back. Stemming his at bat here. And Donato and K Rod discussing what pitch will be next. Pedro Alvarez waiting on deck. Josh Harrison at the plate now trying to end it with Marte. At third base. Three ball two strike pitch. From Francisco Rodriguez. Ball four. Base is full of bucks one out. And Pedro with a chance to not only extend his hitting streak from 12 to 13 games, but a chance to win this ball game. Gomez has now moved to third base. It's going to make an interesting scoring uh, deal with the, if it's a ground ball to third. It's going to go like eight, two. It would be eight. <laughs> <laughs> he is at third base. Now playing third. It's the Brewers center fielder. And Pedro. With the right side of the infield not all the way back. The left side of the infield in. Ball one to Alvarez. 
Second time the Pirates have had the bases full in the late innings. Had them full in the bottom of the ninth. And now here in the bottom of the 13th again. With Gomez uh, in the infield, it allows them to play kind of a shift and at the same time have a third baseman to take away any kind of a bunt from Pedro. One ball, no strikes. Very interesting the way this is. Uh, this is gone. Chance of Pedro Pedro around PNC Park. White knuckle time right here. Two balls and no strikes. Career 379 hitter with the bases full. To the right side. There's one. And there is two. Well, they did it. They went with the, uh, the big overloaded infield and it paid off for them. And there's an example of pulling the ball, putting it on the ground. We're going to the 14th. Pedro Alvarez had great opportunity to win the ball game here, but Juan Francisco was able to pull off the 3-6-3 inning-ending double play. Pirates had him loaded up with one out. They have everybody over on that side of the, the field for that reason. And so if there's anything put on the ground, they can get a double play and in the inning, and that's exactly what happened. Brewers able to do just exactly what they wanted to do. Got the ground ball. Got the double play. Francisco was right in the middle of the bag as uh, Pedro gave him a little shot as he went by. Third baseman Jeff Bianchi leads off the 14th. Bianchi 0 for 1, 257 hitter. I haven't seen the uh, overload infield very often in the last 30 years. I can remember seeing it twice for sure, and both times it's worked. I'm uh, sure I've seen it some other times. And I guess the times it works is when you remember it. Yeah, and it's a the situation was the Pirates had two chances with a runner at third base just to get a fly ball to the outfield too, and that did not happen. Would have been a sacrifice fly for either Harrison or Alvarez, and neither happened. So we are on to the 14th inning. What you're doing is you're pushing all your chips in that there's going to be a ground ball and. You want to. 
get that extra guy kind of like pulling your goalie. You're going for that extra man and and hope it pays off and it did. Two balls and two strikes. This is the longest game at PNC Park since the 8th of April 2011 against the Colorado Rockies. That was also a 14 inning game. Pirates would win it 4 to 3. A we'll comebacker to watch it. One out. Jeff Locke out in the bullpen has his jacket off, his sweatshirt off. He has uh, not gone over to the miles to start to warm up, but well, they would like to avoid that if they can. Yep, he was the scheduled starter for Tuesday. Here is Ioki, the leadoff man. Breaks his bat, rolls one to Walker. Two out quickly. Lineup card is full of red ink. Reed, the only pitcher available. See it down there. Of course, they've added Locke to the bullpen. Two outs, and Gene Segura is the batter. Segura 0 for 5. Takes a strike. Lock is uh, now on the mound. He would be the guy then. No balls, one strike. And Segura takes inside one and one. Yep, so Jeff starting to warm up. Not used to coming out of the bullpen. He's done it a couple of times. Pirates hope he doesn't have to come out tonight. Keeps pitching the way he has. He won't have to do it often. <laughs> Be a fixture in that starting rotation. Ohio, one and two, 94 on the gun for Tony. Longest career outing for Watson, three innings. 23rd of July in 2011 against the Cardinals. He's pushing that right now. Two outs, top of the 14th, still 1 1. And we are on the last day of June, last day of the month. Winner of this one's going to earn it. Cardinals have lost, and the Reds have also lost today. One two pitch. Looks foul and out of play. The beginning of the season, Tony Watson had struggled at times, but boy, as he settled down. Becoming a complete pitcher, using his slider, his changeup, complement that good fastball that he has. Ground ball to third. Alvarez high throw, safe at first is Segura, and the Pirates have blinked in the top of the 14th. That'll be an error on Alvarez, a high throw. Plenty of time. Just didn't make the good throw. Boy, everything was great, and a little pro hop. Don't know what happened. Two outs and Carlos Gomez up with Segura on first. With the potential go ahead run on base. Watson's pitch. Gomez. Pretty free swinger. We have seen him swing so hard at times his helmet comes off. He was trying to put that one 
off the scoreboard. It didn't really used to swing like that. That's a kind of a new thing this year where it's become more of a power threat, trying to drive the ball more. A dozen home runs. When he first uh, appeared in that Brewer uniform, he was more likely to try and bunt for a base hit than anything else. And he always did that rather well. He was really accomplished at that push bunt, trying to push the ball up toward first base, or actually out toward the second baseman where he had put it. And they've got Segura picked off. He's gone, trying to swipe second. So the Brewers make the final out of the top of the 14th on the base paths. Thought stealing. One, three, four. It's the 14th inning. We just had the second seventh inning stretch. Another tired one on the kids' day Sunday, but sticking this one out. Pirates and Brewers tied at a run apiece. And Gabby Sanchez standing in. They'll have to face Rodriguez. Rodriguez starting another inning of work for Milwaukee. Bottom of the 14th. There we go. Sanchez takes a strike. Been here so long today. A whole new weather system could be broken in. That's right. <laughs> 14 innings plus a two and a half hour rain delay we had earlier. So one of those uh, types of days. The old one pitch. Sanchez takes it up high. Now the Pirates haven't played a, a game this long at home in a while. Uh, haven't played a game this long this season at 14 innings, but so the start pit, the first pitch, uh, the starting time 1:35 this afternoon. And we are almost at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock in the evening. Lights are taking effect on the field as the sun's moving further and further to the west. I'm going to go back to April 9, 2008, to find a game where the Pirates played more than 14 innings at home against the Cubs. They were losing 15 innings. In that ball game. One-two pitch. Gabby takes up. Two balls, two strikes. See, everything else is final with the exception of the Sunday night game. Yankees and Baltimore, and that one will get underway in 
Probably about 10 minutes. Sanchez. Uh, all off the glove of Ricks. And the winning run aboard with nobody out. And Wicks had to go a long way for that ball. Couldn't quite find the handle. Yeah, the further an infielder has to run for one of these, you see Gabby going as hard as he could down that line. In his mind, he's thinking, you know, he's not going to have enough time, and he's got to hurry. And uh, I wonder if he just maybe got in a little too much of a hurry there. Didn't get that throwing hand in to cover up that ball at all. Popped right out on it. Ruled a base hit for Gabby Sanchez. Michael McHenry the batter. Goes a man aboard. Bottom of the 14th. Little fishing expedition there, not necessarily trying to pick off Gabby. Trying to have some movement out on the mound, watching McHenry see if uh, he would have ran his hand up the bat, looking for a possible bunt. Now back for a strike. McHenry's been on base twice. He was. Hit by a pitch in the back in the seventh inning, had a base hit in the bottom of the ninth. Average up to 205. Hit one real hard out toward left center early in the ball game. One of those hard hit outs. The Pirates were hitting a, quite a few of those in the mid part of the game. Couldn't find any holes. Two to the fort. Nothing in two to Michael McHenry. Nobody out. And Gamby Sanchez at first base. Two coming. And Rodriguez pitch popped up. It's back of the plate. It's going to make the seats. Michael staying alive. Both catchers. Into extra duty today. That's tough on the catchers. Maldonado's gone the whole way. Lucroy now not available. It was used as a pinch hitter earlier in the game by Ron Renicky. Pirates still have Russell Martin on the bench. He's the only position player available. I saw him on the steps down there earlier. Looking to pinch hit for Watson, most likely. For the first. Brewers have one position player available. Sean Houghton started last night. And two strikes. And the pitch coming from Francisco Rodriguez. In the air to left. Schaefer settles under it. And throw back in. Sanchez back to first. Well, here we are at PNC Park. Along with Dan Potash and Bob Walk. I'm Tim Never. 1 1 the score, seven hits for the Pirates, four for the Brewers. Maldonado, three for five. Rest of the team now one for 41. Marte, two for six. And Vin Mazzaro, five perfect innings pitched in relief right after the rain delay. Retired 15 straight. I'm not sure if they got yours and my picture mixed up. I didn't think they had color back when you played. <laughs> well, very funny. <laughs> I don't know where they got yeah, that picture either. No invention. Though. 
Jordy Mercer. Sanchez takes off. Throw down. Hey, Sanchez swipes a bag. First one of the year for Gabby. Nicely done. Now the winning run is in scoring position. K Rod is not quick to the home. He has that big leg kick. But Gabby's not the fastest guy in the world and still got it pretty easy. Maldonado yeah, pointing at Mercer, but Mercer did what no. he could to get out of the way. No, that, that's not interference. He's gasping at straws. Or grasping. Or either, either, either one, one would be appropriate. Gabby Sanchez in with just his 10th career stolen base. With runners on base this season, Jordy Mercer is 18 out of 45. That's a 400 average. One one pitch. Two balls and a strike. Pirates knocking on the door. Their 51st win if they can get Sanchez around. Last stolen base for Sanchez was last season with the Marlins on the 6th of May at San Diego. Two one to Mercer. Breaking ball outside, three and one. Maldonado had, had, had to be crossed up on that. Watch his reaction to the curveball. Lucky to smother that. It's a huge, huge play. Yeah, that ball gets by. That man, a third and one out. That, that's usually the cross up you can deal with. You're looking fastball and get a breaking ball. It's the other way that usually gets by. When you're looking break a ball, you get a fastball. You'll be awfully lucky to get a glove on it. 375 with runners in scoring position, nine for 24 this year. Now Maldonado goes out and talks to him about it. I, I'm shocked that he didn't go out before, because obviously there's a miscommunication in the signs. Wouldn't you go out and say, hey, you know, we're using, you know, first sign after two? Did you forget? You know, find something out. Maldonado let him throw one more pitch and then went out. Three balls and two strikes. Here comes the payoff pitch. And that's ball four. Mercer walks two on. And one out. And now coming to the plate is Russell Martin. So Martin coming off the bench as Clint Hurdle. He's the last bullet out of the gun here. Martin finally gets to play. He told us a story earlier when he was in Little League how he had to sit one game, every player to sit one game, and they went in extra innings. And that happened to be the game he had to sit and went into the next day. And finally, he was the last batter and hit a home run and won it for him. Can history repeat itself? Two on and one out. And a breaking ball in for a strike. Gabby Sanchez presents the winning run. No balls, one strike to Russell Martin. Martin, the ground ball toward the middle. It's through! Sanchez coming around third. Here comes the throw. Sanchez scores! Pirates win! The Pirates win it in 14. A walk-off winner for Russell Martin. His sixth career walk-off hit. And the Pirates have won their 51st game. That's nine in a row for your Buccos. Russell Martin sitting over there all day long. Hour after hour after hour, he gets in the ball game. 
and gets the game winner. What a day for the Pirates. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, getting to be a, quite a story this year. I mean, every single game, every night, a new hero, a new storyline. What a day for the fish tank, huh? The bullpen was absolutely awesome today. Russell Martin sneaking it through into center field. And Gabby Sanchez right to the plate. Slides in for the game winner. The Pirates are now 21 games over 500. And they have a two game lead over the Cardinals in the division. Your first place Pittsburgh Pirates with the best record in Major League Baseball at the halfway mark of the season through 81 games. Start calling Gabby wheels stealing bases scoring winning runs. Tony Watson a winner today. Russell Martin made sure of that. Watson outstanding in relief. Same with Vin Mazzaro. And now the Pirates two games up over the cards. Cincinnati five and a half back. As the Pirates sweep the Milwaukee Brewers. Dan Potash standing by with today's walk-off winner, Russell Martin. All right, Tim. So this day began sometime around... Eight or nine o'clock this morning for you and the rest of the Pirates. Not a bad way to end it, huh? Great way to end it. Awesome. We had a chance to share some Little League stories with some of our viewers throughout the game. And we talked about one particular game. And I was thinking that... There's, there's a towel right there. There you go. That's not what I was thinking, by the way. Let's, let's uh, continue here. Thanks, AJ. Uh, when you were in Little League, you had to sit out a game because, because everybody has to play. The game went extra innings, went into the next day. You finally got your chance to play, and you hit a home run to win the game. Kind of the same deal today. A day off, you get called upon, win the game. How's that feel? Feels good. I mean, a uh, good win in front of a good crowd. It's always fun. Now, this Pittsburgh Pirate team has... 21 wins above the 500 mark. And today is the official midway point of the season. You've played 81 games. That's got to feel really good. And it's a, something that continues to get better, it seems like, every day. Absolutely. Halfway to 100. 50 more to go. I know it's been a long day, and you've got some cleaning up to do. I'm going to let you go. Thanks for the time. Well done. Thanks for having me. Russell Martin. Well done. Let's send it upstairs to Rob King and Kent Colby, guys. Dan and Russell and Tim and Bob, thanks very much. We'll be rejoining Tim and Bob shortly. Teak, another dramatic win for this team. 21 comeback wins. They have now won eight times when trailing after seven innings, but they are not in this position without the work of the bullpen. We've talked about it all year. This might be their shining moment in what has been an awesome year out of that bullpen. There is no doubt about this might be. This is the shining moment for this bullpen. Look at the numbers today. 12 shutout innings from the bullpen. They picked it up right after the rain delay. Two base hits, no walks, and what? Seven or eight strikeouts. Unbelievable work, especially Vin Mazzaro. He got it started. Five innings, five perfect innings. No hits, no walks. So, uh, yeah, this is the bullpen's finest hour. The good news is for the Pirates, tomorrow's an off day. These guys will. I mean, most of them, except Mazzaro, only pitch one inning, so it really won't hurt you down the line. But... Yeah, the bullpen was outstanding today. And actually, both bullpens were outstanding, you know, in a position where you have a rain delay in the second inning, and both teams lose their starting pitcher that early to end up in the 2-1 to one game in 14 innings. That's pretty good pitching. It sure is. And just like we promised you earlier, it's Miller time presented by Miller Lite, and it's Russell Martin. You heard him talking about the Little League story from earlier today on Boys and Girls Kids Day at the Park. And it's Russell Martin, just like he did back in Little League, delivering the game-winning hit in extra innings. This one comes in the 14th, and the Buccos win 2-1. to one. Nine straight wins, three straight series sweeps for the Buccos. They beat the Milwaukee Brewers 2-1 to one in 14 innings as Gabby Sanchez slides home safely. And that is our Miller time moment brought to you by Miller Lite. We have a lot coming your way at Pirates Post Game, presented by Allegheny Sports Medicine. Post Game Reaction, extended highlights following another dramatic 
Two to one, 14 inning win for the Buccos. That's when Seek and I return on Pirates Post Game, presented by Allegheny Sports Medicine. <laughs>